know A nigga tryna scold All in, guarantee the win Bust up in them bottles of Patron And then we back again You smoking that mid, man We smoking that Pakistan Flyer than Peter Pan This shit should be illegal, man Off in this bit. 119 in the motherfucking building. Hit that motherfucking like button. I, 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 I didn't held you down, light skin. It's good, everybody in the motherfucking building. Hope you, uh, hope you all having a uh, wonderful Sunday today with your boy Tony Digital. Bringing back another. We're on that 1440p visual today, are we? You know what I'm saying? Chilling like a villain. Sluice to everybody in the building, man. Chicago Southside to see you, South B. More Soul Music Retro 813. The Section. Sean Toupe. Dre Jungles. ETC the Villain. Sign. Bucks. Gucci Lou. Shaddy. South B. More. 
Like I said, Dre Jungle's already. I'll say it again. GP Paul was good. Uji, what's good, man? Salute to JMG in the building from Twitch and motherfucking shit. Twitch, IG, and all the above, man. A pure, pure supporter, sample supporter. Who's my man? Affirmative in the building, man. Salute to be more for that first one. DS Kicks for the second one. Mo Chin for the third one. And Tree for the fourth. JSO for the fifth. And Dre Jungles and Signs, six, seventh. And, you know, Cam, what's going on, man? Everybody coming through on this wonderful Sunday. Mopar, what's good, man? Salute my Mopar brother in the building. You already know what it is, man. We uh, we gonna have a good day, man. Hit that motherfucking like button on your way in already, just to get that thing started. And uh, we kind of just letting this this show uh, kind of just blow, man. You know what I'm saying? Blow like a girl, man. You feel me on your on motherfucking? Like... You feel me? Um, I've been kind of gone for a couple of days on this channel. You know what I'm saying? Forgive me for that. But uh, I've been uh, been everywhere else, man. I've been on Twitch, on the main channel, and all the above, just staying. Staying consistent as ever, man. Unfortunately, I saw y'all yeah, was talking about the. Uh, I think it was South Beamore talking about the pool. Unfortunately, still not, still not ready yet. We and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in the stream today as we uh discuss the topic at hand, man. Um, loyalty, man. Loyal brand loyalty at that. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't prepare any notes, nor do I have any specific articles or anything to talk about. It's just about brand loyalty itself. Um, and where it was versus where it's at now and my overall thoughts and opinions on, on, on it. You feel me? Like, fuck brand loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fortunately for me, I've been always able to somewhat, I guess, hold that same energy for it. I never really was like a very brand loyal guy, even though some of y'all might see your boy dressed up in a lot of that Jordan, you know what I'm saying, and Nike, but... I've never been uh just you know Nike only. It's just never been that way, man. Let's so, so, talk about it, bro. Let's talk about it, ASAP. Exactly. Let's fucking talk about it. We'll also open up the uh open up the lines a little bit later on for y'all to come in and uh chop it up in the stream yard. I'll leave a link in a few for y'all down below, man. What's going on, man? Gucci Lou, Millie's NYC. What's good? Yeah, that's me. What's good? What's good? So before before we even start. Where does it lie with you guys? Are you guys brand loyal? Are y'all Nike only, Adidas only? Are preferred, pr prefer wise, you know what I'm saying? Ch uh, checks over stripes? Or fuck the Nike? What, where you at, man? Where y'all at right now? Salute to G Paul and said, loyalty is not where it used to be, man. The Disney and kicks in the motherfucking building. What's good? Chino, cool kicks. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Papa Q was good, man. Definitely understand that, but I want to know where you let, let me know where you stand now or where were, were you once loyal? I, I want to hear it all. You know what I'm saying? Gucci Lou says Nike blesses me. Nike, I prefer Nike and Jordan. I'm loyal to the bag. Hit that motherfucking like button. Brand loyal. They're not paying me. I feel you. Shit, they've paid me and I'm still not loyal to them. You feel me? But are y'all. See, I see a lot of y'all saying Nike. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of y'all saying Nike and, and y'all prefer Nike. But is it is it more is it more so a preference thing then? More so than actual loyalty? Like you feel like that's just the brand you support. You support their vision and all that. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of people say I was until they made it hard to get the shoes. Now I'm a free spirit. I feel you on that too. I'm loyal to what I like. How are you? Was was you gonna do a shoe review on the black question? I was gonna do one, but I got interrupted with some other kicks. Um, I got a video dropping tonight at nine o'clock, so unfortunately I wasn't able to, you know, make that happen, man. Um, I prefer Nike and Jordan. I'm loyal to the clearance markdowns. I feel you. I'm tired of Jordan. I've been on Yeezy as of late. They're not paying me, so why be loyal? Well, I don't know if money does not make loyalty for me. You know, believe it or not. You know, you got to think of it in a way in the aspect of if money makes things loyal, then does, does your wife or your girl loyal to you only because of the money you have? You know what I'm saying? Or women, are you only loyal to your man because of the money that you have or the, the gifts they give you? I don't think that it all revolves around the bag or the money. I think loyalty goes into deeper things than that. There's a lot of things that loyalty, um, lo you know, you can't buy loyalty. 
at least legit loyalty, lo the loyalty you loyalty you want, you can't buy that. You know what I'm saying? So for that reason, I don't think that the bag is uh, definitely a loyal thing. But what made me kind of want to even talk about this today is the fact of that thumbnail you probably saw. I've actually tweeted it or retweeted it. I think some weeks, a week ago, or so ago, the whole Nike No L's T-shirt. You feel me? In a age right now where bots resellers have taken over the game and Nike seeming to not give a fuck about anything. And then they had the audacity to make a t-shirt like that. The t-shirt itself, they woo salutes the motherfucking monolithic in the motherfucking building. Yeah, stop shoddy. Said I need my 40. Pull up to the party. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Fist. You already 100. know. Salutes, man. Hey, man, at the end of the day, y'all don't owe me a goddamn thing, man. All donations are always greatly appreciated. One ninety nine dollars to 50 bucks. I don't owe you a goddamn thing, bro. If I throw you some chitlins, you better be happy. And if you not happy, send it back. I, I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. Gucci, you really bought that fucking shirt, man? That shirt was weak sauce. Like, that shirt represents... The that shirt represents the um distance or the lack of touch that Nike has with its people in a decade and or not even decade in the years where copping a fucking shoe itself is impossible. Why even drop a no L's T? You might as well just drop an L's T. Like the fact that they even did that, like. That's like, I'm trying to think of an analogy that that's like, but it's almost like a fucking slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? That's like, uh, I don't know. That's like selling, that's like going to, going down to the fucking uh, welfare and putting like, you know, no, no food stamps or some shit. And it's like, bro. Everybody there needs it. You know what I'm saying? Putting no L's when everybody's getting them L's. I don't know. It's it's a hard analogy to even come up with, but it's definitely like a slap in the face. I thought about like a year or two or maybe three years ago, you know, 2018. I remember days like with Teddy, man. So my, you know, and that's my guy, man. At the end of the day, always oh, Teddy was heavy on that Adidas shit, man. Like heavy into Adidas and to the loyalty of that brand and fucking with Adidas and Seeing how even Adidas did him at the end of the day, Adidas sent him a cease and desist for the Boost God shit he was dropping. Um, you know, Adidas was not paying him a lot of respect at all for someone who I felt like was playing in or helping promote and push that Adidas hype wave during that age. Look at young, you know, Jumpman Bostic, a man who's been collecting Jordans for well over 20 years, who's been in the game, who's had that connection with Michael Jordan ever since he was in college, you know what I'm saying, and have a collection like that and that he doesn't even have the, the proper due, I feel like, from Jordan brand. Like, he's not getting that proper respect at the end of the day. You look at someone like me, you know? I respect and I appreciate every opportunity I've ever had, but the opportunities that I've been given was just based upon what I could offer in return. If you don't have any type of offering for that brand as well, they're not gonna, they're not gonna give you, you know, it's not nothing long-term. Like, at the end of the day, Puma's putting money in my hands, Adidas is putting money in my hands. I don't know if Jordan brands are putting any money, but they're putting sneakers in my hands, champs. You know, got, there's been some sort of exchange that has happened. But that exchange is only for the fact of what I have to offer in return. And I've always kept that in mind. And that's one of the reasons why I never was ever just a one brand all type of guy. You know, to this day, I still get those offers. I still get those type of deals. But I know that at one point or at some point, you know, there'll be a time when I don't have, they might see that I don't have anything to offer. Will those things still continue to happen? Will there be loyalty there for me? No, there won't. You know what I'm saying? And do I knock them? Nah, I don't. It's business at the end of the day. But that's the why. That's the reason why I move the way I move. Because I know that this is all a moment in time. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody gets that type of treatment. Not everybody gets that lifelong deal. You know what I'm saying? Not, Nike 10, 20 years from now is not going to say, hey man, we remember you back in the 20, in 2000s. You was heavy and pushing our product. We want to continue to send you something. I don't feel like that's something that's gonna stick forever. So, to that is the reason why 
I don't think loyalty should even exist anymore. And if anybody kind of goes against that or expects or, or, or will even say anything different, shit, I'd love to even open the floor to that. You know, but like I said, I remembered like there's just so many people that have done a lot for the culture and for the brand itself that haven't had that proper due, you know what I'm saying, or proper respect. You know, I, I appreciate everything I've gotten. Do I feel like people, there's people that probably deserved it more than me or I would never knock what I've done and what I've accomplished, but I do feel like there are people that get missed and looked over. You know what I'm saying? The brands aren't looking for the stuff you've done over the years. They're looking at the now, what you have them to offer now, what you have to offer for them now. And for that same reasoning, I feel like that's how we should look at it as a customer. We should be someone who you know, buys because of what is able to be given to us now. Look at all the people that were dunk heads, been copping dunks for years. You know what I'm saying? Years and years and years. And now, you know, dunks are the thing. Like those people are Nike doesn't remember them. Nike doesn't know those people that were once there. They're they're there to feed the people that are here now. You know what I'm saying? And fuck it, fuck it. You know, it is what it is. So that's how I look at this shit right now. <laughs> That's how I'm looking at a lot of things. You know, um, popped me some Adidas the other day. You know what I'm saying? Still rock with Adidas, still shot with Adidas. But this also plays into the whole UA talk we had not that long ago. You might feel like you're not uh, loyal. But I feel like if you're someone copping UAs, you're still loyal to that brand. You're still loyal to that agenda that's being pushed this is not a ua talk though so don't get it twisted like we don't have to get focused on there but it is kind of tied into this whole topic the people who hit on a off-white or miss out on a dunk or miss out on all these shoes and then continue to go and buy a ua of that same product is playing into that same exact circumstance they think that they're saying fuck the brands and getting the uas but in reality they are still loyal to the brand so much loyal that they're still willing to represent it even if it's not an authentic product. Something to think about. And then the person that's watching that person rock that shoe doesn't know that that shoe is a fake shoe. So they're, you're helping push that agenda to the next person to remain brand loyal. Someone like me, who is a guy who misses out on a release and keeps it moving. Perfect example. Missed out on the Jordan 3 uh, Georgetowns. Kept it moving. They were kind of sitting though. They probably probably still available but i instead took my eyes off of those and put them on an adidas product and when it cop something adidas keep buying your uas there's nothing against it at the end of the day not telling you what to do with your money spend your money how you please on what makes you happy but i am going to take that opportunity for nike doing the fucks that they're that they're doing to then steer me in the direction of other brands that are out there that i might not have normally looked at i'm not going to make the l and then continue to still buy into that product whether it's a UA product because I really want it, I'll say fuck that, keep my money, and go spend my money elsewhere where something is available to a brand that may want to, you know, From make that more point of accessible. View, I don't support the brands, I support the player. If Kobe or LeBron had a deal with Leaning or Payless, I would try to cop every pair. Salute the motherfucking Derek Flock or Rose. From my point of view, I don't support the brands, I support the player. If Kobe or LeBron had a deal with Leaning or Payless, I would try to cop every pair. Salute to that. And uh, that's definitely something that plays a big role in anything i feel like like yeah nike and jordan brand has those type of slaps but the, the the we're buying into the person you know we're buying into that sometimes it's different though even like kanye like kanye was speaking on you know kanye was doing the maga antics at some time and i was buying into the shoe itself the design and the aspect of the shoe i was kind of looking past the actual person who was who was creating the shoe at that time and even now like i don't buy yeezys much because of Kanye, I buy it because of the actual style. I like that style of shoes. I was buying the tubulars. I was buying the tubular radials. I was buying um, all the crazy shit that was dropping um, in the past. You know, this the weird sock knit, prime knit type of shit that Adidas was dropping. I was all into that type of era. So when the Adidas came around with their own little version of it with the Yeezy, I mean, it was something I could also jump in on and kind of just get 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 boogie with it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, Dre. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not here to talk about people that buy UAs and, and, and telling them that they need to go spend their money elsewhere, but I'm just saying that I think that might be my new motive. You know what I'm saying? If I catch an L on something, 
I might need to look into some, some other stuff, maybe a New Balance or maybe an Adidas or something like that. I don't need to buy into the hype and buy into something that I might have really turned my head if it wasn't as much hype on it. And that's what I did. And I felt good about it. I bought, I bought the Adidas High Forums, the gray joints that I talked about on my sneaker news. It's like a little, it's like they're like an old school look to them, a vintage look. Um, they look, they're just an old school vintage look. I ended up, they were still on Adidas.com. I caught them bitches. I'm looking forward to rocking them and having them on feet and definitely going to put them into rotation this, 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 this time around. But I feel like that's like a new type of thing for me is like, and, and, and I even test or t t tell people who, who got to get the shoe or got to pay resale. Sample over everything. So lose a pop a cue sample over everything in the motherfucking building. And I'm not telling you if you miss out on the release to pay resale neither. Cause I am a guy who says if I miss out on retail, I'm not buying that resale price, nor am I buying the UA. Now, if the resale is like a 50 or maybe a hundred, I could probably get there and talk to myself into it. But even then, like it's starting to push it. But my mind is take my money that I was going to spend there and look into something else. Look into something else. Because at the end of the day, I do feel like buying UAs is still buying into a brand's loyalty. If all you copping is Nike and you missing on a shoe and then you buying the UA version, you're still being loyal to that brand. You might not be loyal to their pockets, but you're representing that brand on your feet. It's still a representation. There's not like a sign that says, I'm not, I'm buying from the, from China. You're still buying into what Nike is selling. Not probably their exact product, but you're buying into what they're selling. You're buying into that logo. You're pushing that narrative. You're, you're, you're continuing to go with that. I did buy, I did pay resale. I've, I, I've, I've been said that though, Gucci. I did, I did pay resale for the Grinches. That's the only shoe I really had to do it, bro. I had to. I knew what was at stake and shit. I don't even know how much they are now. I, I already said it though. Like, I already knew, like, I tried my best. That release itself, that release was horrible. The Grinch release was a release that you couldn't, I couldn't even like log in or some shit. They still going for 350 right now, two on my side. So that's not, they've kind of been sitting around that 350, $400 price point. But I'm happy I got my pair, got it out the way. I ain't got to worry about it ever again, but I tried and I wasn't going to get that UA. That was the only time. Like there's certain shoes where you got to do what you got to do. And that was a shoe. I already said I had to do what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? I had to do what I had to do. Jacob stars in the motherfucking building, man. Hey, Jacob, I'm going to put the link in the motherfucking chat. I know you've been having to get some stuff off your chest. I'd love for you to get it off your fucking chest, boy. Let them know. Let, let them boys see the starlight. Jacob star the third coming in this bitch. Finally catching the live stream. And if you guys want to come in, hit that motherfucking uh, link. You know what I'm saying? We could talk about it. Jacob Starr, uh, are you loyal to Supreme? Jacob Starr is a Supreme guy. Are you loyal to the brand, Jacob? Let me know. I want to know. I would love to know. Jacob Starr has been a Supreme guy for many, many, uh, many, 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 many years. So Sean, Sean Toupe, man, I, and a lot of you guys been saying the Bacons. Are y'all talking about the Air Max Bacons? Y'all talking about those Bacons? The whole time y'all been saying Bacons, 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 my head was thinking the Nike Air Bacon, the Tim Hardaway joints. I didn't know y'all was talking about the Air Max Bacon. I was not, I did not put that into my head till recently. So what do you call people that committed to designer which at retail way over any resale prices? Salute the motherfucking Dre Jungles for that four ninety nine to the Super Chat. I don't even know. That shit was old. That bitch said that shit before he even came through. So what do you call people that committed to designing which at retail way over any resale prices? So what do you call people that are committed to the designer which are over which at retail way over? You got to give me an example on that, Dre. Are you talking like Dior 1s or something? Like, let me know what you're talking about with that. Let me know what you're even talking about. Fuck, I got some goddamn... You got some motherfucking smoke in it, man. Hold on. He said you but you but you wear the company still? What you talking about? Q it through I don't even know how to pronounce your name, but um uh, putting these shoes retail with great art inside local stores. Nah, Dior ones, not even worth that. Well he's saying that people committed to the the, the design in which retail at way over resale prices, so um, like I mean, Dior is a designer, so and it's way over a retail price at two thousand dollars. So, 
like a regular Gucci shoe, for example. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not really hard to get our hands on a pair of Gucci's if you are a person that buys into Gucci. Like, the shit don't... Like, there's always some sort of Gucci available. Now, there might be some sort of Gucci sneaker or something like that. I don't know, but... um, At the end of the day, I, I, don't, I don't feel like they deal with that same sort of problem. Something else I was thinking about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, 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 crew. Crew. People say that they people say that say fuck the company but continue to wear the company just the counterfeit version amazes me. Shit, yeah. I mean that's that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Fuck these companies, fuck these brands, but they're still rocking the brand. They're still pushing the brand's agenda. They're still pushing that agenda. And even if it's real, you know what I'm saying? Fuck Nike and I'm in a Nike hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Fuck the brands and they still in an Adidas legit RUA at the end of the day. What's going on, Sneaker Five Salutes, man? But uh, you know what I'm saying? That that yeah, definitely, definitely, um, definitely something just that is it like we say fuck these brands, but we still remain loyal. We might not want to admit it's loyalty, but it is. Like, I mean, even with me with Jordans, right? I show a lot of Jordans, like, and I think I need to slow down and start showing more. And I do like I try to do the Reebok, I try to throw in the Adidas here and there, um, and do more of that. But at the end of the day, it's like I gotta, it's something I gotta focus on. We all gotta focus on because everybody's still saying they preferably do Nike. They're, 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 they are promoting and pushing the loyalty for the brand. They might not want to call it that, but shit, it's like saying you don't like the girl, but you still fucking her. After a while, I mean, how long are you gonna say you don't fuck with her, but you still smash behind the scenes? You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Salute to, the, salute to the truth, man. He's over here saying I smashed his girl, man. I mean, it is what it is. Yo, Jacob, I don't know if you're trying to get in or what. There's somebody in the back. I'm going to bring somebody in. I wanted to get Jacob in real quick, though. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I it's definitely something that uh kind of amazed me. What's going on, Dante? Love Rock was good, man. I love Nike and all, Rock, Nike and Jacob all the time. But there's just so much other fly shit out there. It is, but... Are you participating in it? You know what I'm saying? Are you copping it or not? Are you you are you participating in the other things? So, you know, that's something that uh, you know, I wanted to bring to the forefront. We got motherfucking 400 in the building. Can we hit that goddamn like button? Hit that goddamn like button, man. It's free for your boy. I really appreciate it. Let's get that thing up to at least 200 likes, man. Jacob just dropped the Supreme video right now. That's what I'm saying. Let's have, he's a, he, Jacob's a Supreme loyal guy. I would like to hear his thoughts and opinions on the brand itself, you know? When they gonna start showing... When they gonna start showing the love back is I don't know. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I've talked about this. Other content creators have talked about this. I mean, me, Zayev talked about this on Zayev's thing. Jacob's in the motherfucking building right quick. I'm a, here he goes. Look at that fucking hair, boy. That boy is beautiful, man. Yo, is the audio messed up? Nah, you good, man. You look beautiful right now, man. That thing, that G got that Jesus hair, Yo, bro. Yo, the audio's fucked up on mine. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. that fucking hair. I'm gonna try to re-enter because it's like hella choppy. Okay. Maybe it's me. Hey, so I wanted to talk about something that we kind of don't take into effect, right? Oh, testing, testing, yeah, testing. Let me see. Sure. Should be right. Testing, okay. No pause in 2021, man. It's my friend, man. I'm not gay, so I ain't got to worry about it. <sighs> um, let me see. Okay, so we've talked about this topic a lot. Let's, but let's, be, let's think about this for once. This is the kicker. We always talk about how our community is a small community, a small niche community, the sneaker heads or whatever. And like I talked about how the Nike Air Monarch is like the best selling um, Nike shoe. It gets millions or whatever. Right. And that the sneaker heads are a small factor. You know, maybe it's like two million of us or something that buys shoes all the time. But at the same time, when we think about it, even though we're a small number of individuals, we are not a small number of spenders. Our per capita is very, very big. 
And what I mean by that is they have to kind of acknowledge us at the end of the day in some sort of way. Because, okay, Nike's wanting to, Nike's a sport brand. They're trying to get money for the basketball players or the sport athletes, right? But at the end of the day, we, like a bat, a dude that does not rock sh- sneakers, he's not a sneakerhead, whatever, right? But he's a basketball player. He's probably buying, what, five basketball shoes a year at the max, right? Right? Five at the max. Or a dad that's rocking uh, Nike Monarchs might cop one Monarch a year. But there's millions and millions of those people, right? Get my drift? You get what I'm saying? But when you talk to a sneaker head, we are copping at least maybe 10 shoes a year. One shoe a month, possibly. You know what I'm saying? Like someone like me, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I didn't check last year's yet, but 2019, I spent $21,000 on sneakers. Okay. Sneakers are retailing. Let's just say for $200 at the max. Let's just, that's a max number. 20,000 divided by 200. Uh, uh, Alexa, what's 21,000 divided by 200? Okay. So me. Me, Tony D, right? I accommodate my, this me is one person accommodate to 100 people out there that just buy one shoe a year. That's a lot of people that one person like me can, can account for. And I think I'm saying it right, but when I say the word per capita, someone like Gucci Lou or Salusta Leo 2 Live, they probably copping 10 pairs of shoes at $200. Alexa, what is 200 times 10? $2,000. You know what I'm saying? Buying 10 pairs of shoes, accommodating for maybe 10 customers out there. Sneakerheads are buying multiple pairs of shoes when the average person that's not a sneakerhead that Nike, I guess, is looking at the bigger picture of. Them people are copying maybe one, two shoes, three shoes a year. We're copying, you put, it may be about, it's maybe two million of us, but we're probably copying at least two Alexa what's two million times ten ten. 20 million we represent 20 million people you know what I'm saying and in a way if you want to if you want to say one customer one person's buying your average person buys a new pair of shoes once a year or something like that you know what I'm saying you you y'all get y'all get what I'm kind of saying though you get what I'm you know what I'm what I'm going with it because I'm not trying to confuse you with numbers but what I'm trying to say is the average guy doesn't buy one, probably buys one, two pairs of shoes a year. They probably retail at $160, $200. It's $400 a year in shoes. When you compare it to someone like us, that we're spending $2,000. So what I'm trying to say is our numbers, the, our per capita is way higher than this the average person out there. So I do think at the end of the day, the power we might not think we have, we might actually do have in some sort of way. You wish me on, man. Exactly the way, yeah, way Adidas did. Teddy was fucked up, in my opinion. It was a fucked up thing, and um, you know, it was fucked up. It was fucked up, bro. Like he helped promote, and not even he it was it was good. Tobados, Sus Tobados. Okay, you got me. So that's what I'm trying to say is like, okay, there's two million of us. Alexa, what's two million? The div- cancel. Hold on. Alexa, what is two million times twenty? Fuck, cancel. Ale- <laughs> Alexa, what is twenty million times two thousand? So if there's 2 million sneakerheads out there that spend $2,000 a year in shoes, did you just hear that number? 2 million sneakerheads, like people that are engaged in this shit, that spend at least $2,000 in shoes. Alexa, what is 2 million times 2,000? 4 billion. How much money did Nike make last year, bro? That doesn't even, that, that might, my numbers might be off then. So Nike's global revenue amounted to $37.4 billion. So 
So I would I would have to say that maybe it's not two million of us then, or maybe we don't. What, what, what y'all think is a normal number for an average sneakerhead to spend a year? Two million people spending two billion. Uh, two million people spending two thousand is definitely can't be the equation. And if Nike made only thirty seven billion last year, she is, she is, she compete she computed that shit pretty fast. Am I? Let's just say that shit. Let's just say it's a hundred thousand of us. Alexis, what's what's a hundred thousand times two hundred? God damn it! Keep saying it wrong. Alexa, what's a hundred thousand times two thousand? Okay, two hundred million. I doubt. I still think there's more than a hundred thousand sneaker heads out there, or a hundred thousand people that. I think there's more than a hundred thousand people out there that spend money on sneakers. Now, once again, where I where I am fucking up at is I'm just doing Nike. I'm not doing Adidas. Nike is this 37 billion, but the 2 million people that said are sneakerheads, that doesn't mean that they're not Adidas as well. Like they didn't, Adidas revenue um, was, uh, $12 billion, I think it says. $9 billion in 2020. Showing like first half. It just shows the first half of each year. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, Jacob. Hold on. I'm gonna post again. I'm gonna post the link in here. Y'all can y'all can come in now if y'all want. King Birch. So you saying fifty thousand? And what would you say is the average number of money spent a year by that sneakerhead? Alexa, what is fifty thousand times two thousand? God damn it! I keep saying God for. Forgive me, Lord. Alexa, what is 500,000 times 2,000? 1 billion. Okay, there you go. 1 billion. All right, Jacob's here now. Let me see. Yo, you hear me? Your, your camera came on. Jacob, you there? Let me turn my camera on. All yeah. right, can you hear me? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. It was like hella choppy. All right. I can hear you What's going on, man? Brand loyalty, up, man. man. You are a brand loyal guy. As far as at least in the past, I don't know what you. I wouldn't now. say I, that's another thing I want to correct. I don't think I would ever say I'm brand loyal. Like I got Supreme's never been my favorite brand. Supreme's just been my focus because reselling clothes is how I provide for my parents and my family and my nieces and nephews. So it's like for me, like my perspective has been a reseller. <laughs> granted, I'm not a botter, so I'm not copping you know a hundred, two hundred pairs. Um. But like my main thing was, and I called you because I thought, I think it's an interesting topic. Like I disagree with wearing fakes and the arguments presented, but I still watch all those videos because I'm a firm believer. Like if you, if you believe in something, even if you basically should always like educate yourself on the opposing arguments point of view, right? Exactly, yeah. you just, like if you just simply listen to the people that agree with you, you're just going to kind of get caught up in an echo chamber and you're never really going to understand outside viewpoints. Yeah. I always, I always watch those videos. You know, I watch, you know, some of Troll McGinn's videos, some of MK's videos. And um, I think it's a, interesting, even if I disagree with it. Can I, can I ask you a question? What's that? You see, I'm pretty sure all over now, the, the progression of UAs and um, sneakers, right? Yeah. How much they gotten better. How is that in the fashion world? Is it at all close or they're, they're, they're years behind? A fake supreme think, and or that. Well, I think it's harder. I think it's harder in the in fashion to imitate, because the thing is like streetwear. There's two sides of it, right? So one with when it comes to Supreme specifically, Supreme being probably one of the most fake streetwear brands. It's hard for a couple reasons. One, they always change their manufacturing, and it's a lot easier for Supreme to change. I mean, you think like in the last three years, the company's been sold twice, right? They sold fifty percent of their shares to Carlisle Group. Then that was sold to VF Corporation. And they're like, since then, like just in like the last like three years, they've literally changed the manufacturing on several different types of hoodies um, several times. I don't think Nike changes manufacturing that much. Uh, but I think it's a lot easier to kind of like fake something that has a set system like Nike than it does with Supreme. I feel like it's a lot harder to fake Supreme because it's always changing and always, you know, every like five years is completely different. So like even StockX, there's a reason that StockX doesn't have a lot of like su super old Supreme items because they haven't been trained on that era of Supreme. It's constantly cha it's constantly changing, right? Some, yeah. Some like some Supreme it was made on Gildan tees. Some Supreme is made 
overseas, some Supreme is well, made. Well, not in uh, Gildan teams. Like, Supreme's always, that's the one thing that's like, like. What was the team was think, on, though? Was it Gildan? Or what was that no, one? It type? was American Apparel. Okay, there you go. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. They were made on American Apparel. And all their tees, like, as long as I know, as long as I can think of, have been made in the U.S., which is. Have like, to call out oh, we got donations real quick. He say retail first, but when he hit retail, he sell them and replace them with the UA's hashtag UA for life until more pairs made. Salutes the copper colored king. Um, have to call MK the truth out. He says retail first, but when he hit retail, he sell them and replace them with UA's UA for life until more pairs made. Um, salutes the copper. I appreciate that five dollar donation. Um, MK is not here right now to ask that. I can't put that yeah, I on him. I thought he said that he's still retail. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I won't put that on him. But Copper, if he does come up or pop up, feel free to address him in that. We can, you can ask that question. You know, or you know, we can so, go ahead. I think like the biggest argument against uh, UAs, in my opinion, is kind of what you said, and this is what I called you about when I first saw the. Because I think it's an interesting topic, right? It's just mm -hmm. the fact that like. You're saying fuck the brand and like, oh yeah, well fuck Nike. Like I'm not gonna pay Risa or fuck, I guess fuck the market. Not really fuck the brand because I don't think they're saying fuck Nike. Well, it's fuck Nike fine. too for not fixing the situation. That's that part. Fuck them for not fixing the bodings and allowing it to happen. So that's where, that's where that comes. In. It's fuck the market and fuck the brand. Fuck the brand because they're not, they're not making enough pairs or they're not fixing the bodding. So that's where that that does come into. I that's I just on. think if if you're saying fuck the brand, like then don't wear the shoe at all because you're still you're a walking billboard for that brand there's a million other shoes of that color like for me personally like you can go back to like the very first videos on my youtube channel and i've always said this the shoe that my favorite shoe to date still right now Blazer? are the Nike sb blazers that's what first got me into sneakers were sb blazers sb dunks i wasn't as big into sb dunks as i was sb blazers um but like sb blazers is what that's still to this day. I love blazers. So, it's the only it's the only shoes from the off white collection that I've kept. Every other off white shoe I sold, um, I just you know, and I have a lot of other like low key blazers as well. But in my opinion, like if you want to say like fuck the brand, it's it's just like you're still representing that brand. There's a million other shoes with that colorway. Yeah. There's a million other dope looking shoes out can, there. Can someone say like my man YSL DJ said I'm buying UA? Fuck Nike. Can he technically say fuck Nike if he's still buying UA? Um. I don't think, I just, I think it is sounds it, is weird. it a contradiction? You're, you're, promoting, you're promoting Nike. You're still promoting them. Like, yeah. you're still, you're basically, you're like, it's still the overall argument that I would use against it is like, I, I don't, I don't hold any like accountability towards them when it comes to like people buying and selling fake sneakers. Yeah. No. That's going to happen no matter what. Like, yeah. no matter what, like, I have, I have friends that don't know better that are like, will call me up and be like, hey, bro, like, blah, blah. There's this Travis Scott sneaker going for this amount. Should I buy it? And like they're they're not really into sneakers like that. They just like what you know. They just see something they like, and I'm like, oh, that price sounds way too good to be true. Like if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. It's probably a fake. Um, but like in my opinion, it's still going to the same problem of like needing that brand. Like I need you know like for me, Mother, I need that brand regardless if it's real or fake. I need it. That's yeah, exactly. I need that Nike swoosh. You know, I need that Patina yeah. shoe. I need that Jordan whatever on my feet and i think that's kind of the bigger issue is that like you know a lot of times like for example right like a lot of the sneakers that i keep like i don't give a fuck about a travis scott sneaker i have a couple of travis scott sneakers i've only kept that shoe because of market but like for the most part i don't care like i don't have any like childhood memory to travis scott you know but like for example certain vintage tees right like there's vintage tees that i keep because I have some kind of like childhood memory to that artist, whether it be like Bone Thugs and Harmony, right? Like I have an Art of War tee from them or like this Tupac tee, for example, things like that, where it's like, kind of, I have some like actual attachment to some memories mm -hmm. towards, I don't have any like memories towards Travis Scott. Is he a good artist? Yeah, cool. Do I fuck with the shoes? Yeah, cool. But like, I don't need those in my collection. And if I took an L on them, like I got mine do a stock X sponsor, so I got mine for free. But if I took an L on them, like I wouldn't sit here and be like, okay, I need to go get a fake pair. I just like you, like you've mentioned before, I would just move on to another sneaker. I'd go get a New Balance or something like that. New Balance is there or some shit like that. Yeah. You know? Jay Lynn's, uh, maybe that's you, but we have heard fuck the brands chat. Have we heard fuck the resale or fuck the brands or both? I've heard fuck the brands a lot lately. I mean, I even said like I've said it. Like I'm not trying to. I'm 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 I'm, I'm with y'all. Like I'm not saying that like. I'm I'm here to bring the discussion though. Like, do we need to pay attention more to that? 
You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying fuck the brands, then this to go support another brand. And that, you know, you like, are we really saying fuck the brands and we're still going and buying, you know, resale or buying UA? Like, this is not a UA thing only. It's a resale thing. We can't say fuck the brands and go buy a resale. We can't say fuck the brands and go buy UA because we're still pushing that brand. And I do want to say, I don't think I've ever heard Troll or MK say fuck the brand. But, like, I've heard, you know, I've, heard in- I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. I, I believe I've heard MK say, fuck the brands. They can do, like, that's in, like, they need to do better and, you know, offer better quality or, you know, uh, better availability and stuff like that. I'm I troll, do think, I, I, think this was, I think I watched a podcast with Troll on there and it was like, I like that it was somewhat reasonable because I'm pretty sure he was the one that said, like, uh, he wouldn't mind if the success rate was higher. Because, like, don't get me wrong, like, my sneakers account is, like, I don't hit on sneakers and I don't bot yet or anything <laughs> yet keyword i'm a like i believe in like i probably would do it if i learned how to do it but the big thing for me is like when it comes to uh sneakers account i remember him, him saying something like it would be more reasonable if you hit like half the time or like 30 percent of the time like every once in a while but like i just don't feel like nike even wants that like nike doesn't nike doesn't they want to kind of gamify the process they want to make it this elusive process where it's extremely hard to get. Although that's not their biggest market share, it just builds up hype for the brand. And then when you go buy that same sneaker, like they, I don't even think they really give a fuck because you're essentially doing exactly what they want, which is putting it on your feet, walking around so people can say, oh, that's cool, blah, blah. And then they need a pair and then they're gonna go take an L and then they're gonna go buy a similar sneaker that looks somewhat similar or they're gonna go hit an outlet or go get something they can afford. And that's where their biggest market share is anyways, is selling you know, like fly knits and just basic I, ass Nike I, shoes. I think that, uh, I think Nike definitely, that, in my opinion, I think, and this is Adidas as well, whatever. I think that Nike would prefer someone to buy their fake product than go and buy an Adidas product. So if they sell a shoe oh, sure. and it sells out, you can't get it. Nike wants you to go and get that UA, then go in go get an Adidas shoe in my opinion, because you are helping represent their brand. Like, I think that definitely is the case here. Like I, I think, you know, and the amount of people that are still going to see that, like there's still going to be people that see that and think like, Oh, that's real. I need that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go pay resale. You know, someone that does have the capability or does have the access to go pay resale is going to see that sneaker and be like, Oh damn, that's cool. I see that on this person. And then they're going to go pay resale. So like, you know, either way, it's going to add to the, like the machine. But I don't think Nike, I mean, Nike obviously isn't necessarily making money. There was a video you talked about not too long ago uh, where the dude was comparing fakes, a fake pair and a real pair. And he said that he doesn't understand why Nike leaves that money on the table. And I get that because Nike doesn't make money if they go pay resale for a particular product. But I just think in general, when people see Nikes on someone's, when they see Nike on everybody's feet, that's kind of just feeding the machine of like, okay, I need I need the next Travis Scott Jordan that drops. I need this fragment Jordan PlayStation Travis Scott collaboration. Yeah. You know? Yes, yeah, so I'm what I'm saying is that Nike would want you to spend your money on UAs before you spend your money in Adidas pocket. They already made the maximum amount of money they can make off a shoe once it sells out. They can't make anything else. Do they want your money to go to their competitor or maybe to something in China but still be able to represent their brand? I think they would want it that way. Think of it as politics. You got Democrats and you got Republicans, right? And then you sometimes got the Green Party or whatever the fuck or the independent that's running. If I'm a Democrat and I'm running, I'd rather someone vote for either me, the Democrat, or, or vote for the independent instead of giving the vote to the Republican. So, like, that's just how it is. Like, I'm, I think that Nike, at the end of the day, they're going to want their money going towards the UA because they they know that in the end of the day, that, that, that symbol still there. Now, if it was something where they were not, a shoe was not selling out and it was going to the UA, then that's where there would be a problem, but they're not making money as far as we know in the resale market or, or in, um, they're not making any money even in the UA market, but at least they can get their shoes out more. They make a hundred thousand pairs, but then there's, 200,000 UAs, you're just adding in more promotion for free, more people with that product walking with it. What's going on, Chocolate? 
Chocolate, what's good, bro? How's it going? Can't hear you, bro. Your mic's weird. That's the same sound that I heard when I came in, that, like, choppy noise. Chocolate, you there? Might need hey, to... You might have to come in and come out. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. What's up, bro? Okay. This is back. Hold on. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear him now? It's real low, though. He might need to talk, uh, leave and come back. Okay. Yo, troll. Um, Jacob wanted to holler at you, man. He wanted to have a talk with you. Uh, you're in the chat. Oh. You... oh. Yeah. They, yeah. He really wanted to have a talk with you on a live a, a couple lives ago. If you want to take that link, troll, for a little bit. Um, I wanted to hop in with him and MK. Oh, MK. I don't know if MK is here, but if MK, you know. Yeah, both of them. I mean, either way. I mean, they both kind of. I guess they want to. He wants to have a good talk with you. Uh, it's I would a little bit, maybe a little bit of debating, but not like a you're wrong, you're right. He just wanted to challenge some of your thoughts with his own thoughts and hear hear you out, hear from your perspective. Um, salute to everybody in the motherfucking chat, man. We got four hundred and sixty three. If you can hit that like button for your boy, it'll mean the world for you, boy, man. It's free. <laughs> Salute to everybody in this bitch. Salute to motherfucking sneaker addict. I see you, Dale. What's good, brother? Soldier Kicks, what's good, man? What's going on, man? Lou, what's good, brother? Uh, By the way, did you did you end up uh, streaming the Grand Theft Auto RP last night? Nah, nah. So I got in. Uh, I, I had this, I'm, I'm kind of waiting on some um, some uh, applications that I sent in uh, about which uh, server I'm going to join in. I'm trying to look into getting to this the LS one and then... I'm looking into SSB now too, so I'm just trying to figure out. I'm not gonna cap. I'm trying to. I'm trying to goddamn use a little bit of clout to see if I goddamn get in one of these motherfuckers. They need to help your boy out, like somebody, man. I know someone that I, I talked to about getting in a server because uh, I just ordered a computer just so I could play that game. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm trying to get in there. Oh, so, you there? Yeah. Uh, streaming soon. Hey, what's better? Yeah. What's good, bro? Hey, nothing much. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Um, it's still choppy for me. Why is it doing that? It's annoying. Is it good on your end, Connie? Yeah, you're just low, though. I ain't gonna lie. You're a little low. I, I don't know why. Oh, I can hear him now. Troll's here. Let me see. Let me see. A troll, you there, Troll? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm troll. Every I'm time someone new enters, it does this choppy troll, You hear Troll, though, right? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear him good. Yeah, okay. I can hear everyone now. All right, go ahead. Yeah. I'm hungover, bro. So oh, forgive shit. me. I got, I barely surviving right now. <laughs> so are you kind of caught up, or are you just come coming in? Because I know you know. Yeah, I was listening. I was listening. Uh, I might have missed a few parts here and there because I was, I just got back home. Long night out on the strip or something or what? Loyal. Uh, to I just brand went, went out drinking last from night. After, uh, being big dollar so those loyal that to might brand not be real. Or going across the water, wait in three weeks for a shoe that might not even come out right. Loyal to so, a brand, loyal to a brand that have you copping from resellers paying big money for a shoe that might not be real, or going across the water, waiting three weeks for a shoe that might not even come out right. Fuck out of here. So you, Millie, so what are you, what are you saying right oh, there? Wait, he's on. So what are you saying right now with that, Millie? Are you saying like there's this the risk is too much on? Are you uh, are you like me where you just not buying at all? Or where are you at with that? Salute to motherfucking Millie for that $10, though. Salute to motherfucking Skinny in the building. Skinny gang in this motherfucker. All right. Um, because if you do your research, like if you actually take the time out and not just jump at the first cheap UA offer you see as it comes to a particular shoe, then you won't have that issue. Yeah, I mean... Okay, okay. I'm yeah. back. I'm back. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I feel you on that, Chuck. <laughs> so... Uh, Jacob, do you just want to go ahead and ask him anything, or do you want to... Yeah, so, so, I guess my first question Troll, is, can we like... see you, or are you not going to be... Are you just that hungover? You'd like to see your face. Yeah, bro, I'm fucking laying down right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You good, then. Um, so I guess my first question is, if you take a... Say you don't get the sneaker, why do you... Why do you worry so much about it to the point where you end up buying a fake version anyways like whether it be real whether buying like for me whether you buy a resale or buy a fake pair why buy the fake pair at all because uh, i won't are you talking to me or you talk either talk one really i mean you guys both answer it or you guys can answer it in like the order that uh, you can go first bro that's the thing Chocolate, I, you sound way better now chocolate whatever you just did okay cool. 
I'm not, it's not about worrying. It's that when you see the thing pop up and you want to buy it, that want for that item doesn't go away. And normally, like in the past, you could just say, all right, screw it. Another shoe's coming. But over time, you keep missing so much that it's like, I'm not getting anything I want out of this thing that I love. So why am I, why am I depriving myself just because uh, the pair of shoes didn't come from whatever factory Nike chose to contract that month or that at that time it just doesn't matter to me i'm it's not but it's not feel like oh wait i guess i'll, I'll have chocolate drop also answer the question before i respond but if i can get both uh, sides. for me it's uh is there some sort of like happy. adjustment mic thing for him or something because it seems like when he first talks it's like good and then it like just starts dying out I got my mic volume all the way up. I don't know what that's like. That. You have some sort of automatic shit going on. Yeah, let me turn that off. Hold on. It's like I can tell, like it's adjusting. Like when you first talk, it comes in loud and it drops down. Oh yeah, the, if you go to Streamyard and click on audio, turn off that automatically adjust mic volume, and then hit okay. the echo. I did it on my behalf for him, but it's it, it, but it doesn't do nothing. Or edit his mic, yeah. Like. Yeah, I just is that better? talk. Is that better? One two, one two. See, it starts good and then it starts fading. Just go ahead though. Go, go ahead. Okay. Um, for me, it's the fact that uh, we give these brands too much power. So for me, I mean, I'm a I'm a grown man. So if I want to shoot, I mean, I'm gonna get the shoot just because the brands decide not to help out the regular consumer and kind of cater more towards buyers and resellers. I mean, that's, they make their decisions, so I'm going to make mine. So I'm going to go across the water and I'm not going to put money into their pocket or another for average Joe's pocket. And as far as like being free to advertise it, that's fine. Cause, I mean, if a person sees it on my feet and they come up to me, I tell them where I get it from. Now they want to go pay resale. That's not them, but I'm completely honest about it. And I'm like, Hey, you don't have to pay uh, an arm and a leg for this shoe. This is where I got it from. This is how much I paid for it. The, the choice is yours. Because at the end of the day, it's about personal responsibility. So you make the choice, I made mine. Uh, I agree it's about personal responsibility for sure. I think like, and I guess at the end of the day, like if you don't, like to me, it's like you're still deciding to put money in their pockets just indirectly. You know, that's the way I kind of look at it. And like, I feel like, we give a lot of credit and mind you, I'm probably a source of this problem too, because I make videos about Supreme, but I try to say in my videos, like throughout those videos that at the end of the day, uh -huh. Supreme's not anywhere near my favorite brand. Like it's not even my top five. I wouldn't even say top 10 favorite brands. Um, but like, I feel like in general, if we have a disagreement with the brand, it's not really saying like, fuck the brand by copying UAs, especially copying something that's such a small market share where their money actually comes from like nike's not sitting here making a shit ton of money on just limited sneakers like that's not their main focus yeah they that's just true. do that to drive hype so it's like to me it's like whether you cop retail to be honest you're probably making them more money by wearing a fake sneaker than copying the pair retail in the first place because like they're going to make a little bit of money on that one sneaker but the amount of money they're going to make from just people walking around having nike billboards on their feet is going to be way more than just a single pair. And I think that's kind of like my biggest thing is like, I think that there's a lot of sneakers, like for example, right? My favorite, probably like one of my favorite non Nike sneakers. And I always talk about this too, is the Converse one star, right? Or like the Jasper uh -huh. sales. Like those are all sneakers that are really dope. They come out in sick colorways. They sit on shelves and no one worries about them because they're Converse, right? Or because they don't have yeah. the same hype, you know, like people will wear SB dunks, but like, why not wear the Converse one style? That's a legendary skateboarding shoe. Like, that's a sick ass mm. skate skateboarding yeah. shoe. And so I just feel like in general, I think that like my biggest thing with the UA is like, okay, I completely understand, like have, have a stance on it, but why not promote shoes that come in similar colorways that still look sick as fuck, that are alternatives that kind of promote like, okay, well fuck Nike, I'm not gonna help them at all. I'm not gonna help promote them i'm not going to help do anything that puts money in their pocket when clearly they don't care about their consumer because at the end of the day we're still if we wear fake shoes we're still helping them 
at, you know. Oh, are you coming strictly from the perspective of the people that are mad at Nike? Uh, I'm not saying strictly, but I think that at the end of the day, like most people who are copying UAs, UAs have some disagreement with Nike. Like, I think it was you. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It might have been MK. I've, you know, like I watched both of your guys' videos kind of here mm. and there when it pops up on my feed. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was you that said like you wouldn't have a problem or you wouldn't worry so much about copying fakes if you copying was actually like if it was actually fair where you know you took an L maybe half the time or you know every yes time. yeah as opposed I never... to like where you go every single time and it's like L L L you know yeah you start to like like I say you if you're out and you're looking for sneakers that you like let me address one thing too like you a lot of like you said uh, maybe you should go to the Converse or whatever else but we can't really help these aesthetic of what we like like if somebody likes a fat ass they're not going to want to go if they can't get a fat ass you know <laughs> fat ass chick they're not going to go and try to find some anorexic chick just as a substitute like we like what we like so um if the game has been rigged against us like then we just got to do what we got to do but i've never said fuck nike now, i'm reluctant to even blame nike for this problem i'm actually more I, i'm always going after the people that are feeding the resale market because that is what has taken the sneakers out of the out of the, out of play for us. But I don't I even. Think, so I do think though, like most people, and maybe this is just mostly because of style norms. Using your example, if you like a girl with a fat ass, most people would go get an anorexic check before just going getting like a fake blow up doll. You know, like that's essentially uh... what the I, or a fake. <laughs> So it's like most people would. Most people are still gonna prefer the anorexic chick over the, over the blow up doll or whatever if they like fat asses. You know, that's like. <laughs> I think like they'll just go find an anorexic chick and then put a fat, a fake fat ass on her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When it comes to retail pairs, I mean the sneaker game is so crazy that when you get that retail pair, the first thing you think about isn't, hey, I'm gonna look dope in these shoes. First thing you think about is. Hey, is this shoe going for such an enormous amount that it would be worth me keeping it? Would it be more advantageous for me to flip it? Oh, for and sure. Like, and so that's why, I, like, I, I wear a UA because I want to buy a shoe because I want to wear the shoe and I want to have to deal with that uh, that mentality of oh man, should I keep the shirt? Should I flip it? No, I just want to wear the shoe just to wear the shoe. So why not? Why put myself through that? Uh, stress myself over that. So let me let me say something real quick because I do I do I, I can see the comments in the playback. This topic in general wasn't really about UAs. I wasn't trying to make it about UAs. It's made about brand loyalty. However, Jacob did come in and Jacob's been wanting to come on for a minute to talk a little bit about UAs with Troll MK. So that's why I'm letting this go, go in the direction and I'm kind of just sitting back and letting them discuss and. And just being a mediator, not even a mediator, like just being someone to talk and kind of guide the conversation. But at the same time, I will kind of get on topic with you, Troll. Do you feel like, um, you know, you whether you buy resale, UA, or even retail, well, not even that. If you buy UA, isn't there still some sort of loyalty to that brand? I mean, probably. Uh, we like what they put out. We like, we love their products. We love them so much that we're willing to go get yeah. UAs. Okay. Um, for me, though, I, I, it's not about me versus Nike. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not well, trying to. We have heard people say "fuck the brands," though, right? Like, we do hear that. Like, "fuck the brands." Like, they think that the buying UA is sticking to them. We're gonna stick it to them and go and get the UA. I've heard that numerous times on my show from. Uh, various people, you know what I'm saying? Now, I don't think that way. I think it's more. Yeah, he, but he, okay, so so even if they're saying that, and you you're, you guys are saying there's the people that are saying fuck the brands are still helping by getting UAs because they're promoting, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess that would technically be a contradiction if that's what they meant. I think what they meant is just forget it. Right. I'm going this way. Not like, necessarily... Like more like an angry comment as opposed to a actual. Yeah, like, I don't think they're thing. actually mad at Nike, like well, once, or they want to like so, damage so, Nike. So once again, when we for the person who's saying fuck the brands and they still going and getting the UA, they're playing into the the monster that Nike's trying to push out, right? 
is equivalent in my opinion in my eyes and I've, I've i've already had this discussion with you troll but i'm just saying it's the same aspect of saying fuck the reseller and then going and buying ua because they're just pushing that resell agenda as well because at the end of the day when you're buying these shoes or you, if your whole collection is a fucking stemmed of the hype resell shoes on the market and that's how you're rocking you're pushing that same resell agenda whether you like it or not because nobody's going to go up and ask you where you got them from like they might be some people but majority of the people that see you are just going to see you yeah, and, nobody keep, and it's going to keep um, keep it moving and that then like i think I, like i talked to you about this i think zaya talked a little bit about it yesterday i think or the day before but they see troll djing in vegas in his off whites troll fucking hates resellers but little does he know that kid or that man that saw troll that night is now on stock x because he's had enough of seeing that shoot he's gonna go pop that fucking drop that fucking bag off so the same way we say we say fuck the brands and we go buy a ua and we're being loyal to that brand with that it's the same kind of aspect of saying fuck the resellers but we still buying shoes that are heavily and big in the resale market yeah i mean but the thing is is like we are already there the, the mentality of us is we want the shoe right we're all if we want we I'm not going to walk down this down the street in an off white and magically somebody's going to just want to get it an off white that didn't already have that idea in their mind. You know what I mean? Uh, like we already I don't know. We already want it. You would be Most surprised. You'd be surprised how think many the sneakers that we got on are you, are weird. You'd be surprised at the amount of people who come to me and say fuck you Tony, you made me speak. Say that again? I say you'd be surprised how many people say "fuck me," Tony. Like "fuck Tony," or "fuck you." You you wasted me so much money this year, like just because of the reviews and shit. That's not a problem. That's not a new problem. Yeah, but it's not even like a real fuck. It's not a real fuck you though. It's like a you know like damn man, Tony, you be making me want to get this and that, and I can't. One well, I minute mean, I hate a shoe, and then I see your review, and I want to go get it. Like salute the motherfucking kicks and beats in the motherfucking building, man. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand it's on them, but we're pushing this message with our voices here on this platform. Like, maybe for you, OG, it's fine because you're you're a viewer. You're someone who consumes the content, but someone who's pushing out the content, it, it it's it's what we we send out to our to the to our audience at the end of the day. So it's like I at the same time I do hold some sort of responsibility. I'm not saying like from. From my aspect, there's like that, that, I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing. I'm not gonna start not showing shoes because people are spending money. Like at the end of the day, I'm I'm doing I I'm I'm doing my reviews, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So like it's not nothing bad. Like yeah, it's on them. But what I'm just trying to say is, if we're someone who's pushing the agenda of a fuck reset, these are like ripple effects. Exactly. Yeah, these are just like this is this is what I mean. These are like the ripple effects that we can't control. Like all I can do is hope that eventually. Uh, the person that's that keeps doing this or going out and, and buying for resale and all that it just eventually finds the information they need to First make a, off, a decision. First off, we Hold didn't on. get a we notification. Second oh, salutes to my brothers Tony and Troll Magden and the chat. Until we stop spending on the brands, they will always win. Support uh -huh. Simple Y'all, they appreciate their clients. <laughs> So lose the motherfucking you one. First off, Zay Bug is unhappy we didn't get a notification. Salute to Zay Bug in the building, man. Salute to Zay Bug. Okay. Secondly, salute to my brothers Tony and Troll Mageddon in the chat. Until we stop spending money on the brands, they will always win. Support sample, y'all. They'll appreciate their clients. Need those kicks. They de we definitely <laughs> will. We definitely will. But listen, you. Oh, you're gonna appreciate, huh? Because where's my parachute pants then? Whoa. Uh, what do you mean? You ordered something? Oh, maybe it was Bull I was talking to. I was like, uh, man, where the fuck are the parachute yeah, pants, yeah, yeah, man? I need it. to. <laughs> you can't tell that man Bull nothing, man. Man forgets. He forgets. He forgot yesterday, bro. Yo, OG, man, you're gonna have to. OG, you're gonna have to try another mic, bro. Cause like, I ain't gonna lie, you're so low. I, I don't even know if I'm. I be over talking you, bro. It's so low. Yeah, you might need to like switch the. I don't know, bro. Are you like stop uh, like not next to it? It sounds like you're twenty feet it, away. No, when he's when you hear him come in, it's high and then it drops. It's like some sort of adjustment thing. But yo, you won. Yeah. You said until we stop spending money on the brands, they'll always win. That's the topic of the discussion. Is that we don't even have to spend money on Nike anymore for them to win. If we spend in resale or spending money on UA, 
which doesn't ever touch Nike's hand, they're still winning because we're still putting the shoe on our foot. We're still supporting them at the end of the day by just rocking the shoe. So, yeah, in a way, one way you are, but I mean, like, so that's you're, why, you're supporting them as far as brand what awareness or promotion. Uh, who for knows, sure, brand man, promotion. But like, yeah, but, and but, I will say, like, I don't like. I agree with the concept. Like, when you guys talk about people talking shit towards someone, like, I think no matter what, if you talk shit to someone for what they wear, I think you're lame as fuck. Like, I don't care. Like, whether it's yeah. them wearing fakes or them wearing whatever, I think it's lame as fuck. Um. That's a huge problem I have with this whole thing. Like the, the the money and the resale thing is almost turning people into um, just complete assholes. You know what I mean? Like they just they feel I, entitled or like they deserve more respect or clout or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Off of clothes. Clothes have definitely sneakers. Become, like <laughs> somewhat, you know? well, clothes and sneakers have definitely become like somewhat of a status symbol, right? But I, that's the thing is that like I almost feel as if all of that and mind you i can't i'm not judging anyone because there is a part of me that you know i'm a part of that i'm a cog in that machine right like a lot of the way that i've made my living the way that i provide for my parents is through reselling clothes um you know someone said earlier i think it was a uh, uh, chocolate drop said something about he was talking about how he was kind of concerned when he puts uh wears a shoe he has to be concerned as to whether or not he should just resell the shoe like for me like Usually nine times out of ten, I'm just gonna resell the shoe. There's only a couple of shoes I really care about. Like for example, Jordan ones. I've never cared about Jordan ones. I only have one Jordan one in my collection that I actually will keep forever, and that's because it's a collaboration with a BMXer um, back there on that show. And I would pay resale for that shoe a mm. hundred times over. Oh, the just to or... see, but yeah, the Nigel Sylvester. Okay. To hopefully see like okay, hey, like Nike, I'll pay resale for the shoe. N forever to hopefully see more collaborations with more BMXers. So, so, so let me let me let me go ahead and put a little pressure then. Yep. If you're getting Don't, a, bro, I'm hung over. If you're getting a shoe <laughs> retail and the first thing in your mind is talking thinking about money, well then were you ever really in, in in were you ever really involved with the shoe? Did you really have some sort of thing because if I really want a shoe, that's not what I think, regardless of how much is reselling for, unless I don't have a real yeah. connection with it. Like I I've, I've bought in shoes and they've been up in price and my brain doesn't say man I don't know if I'm gonna rock it because I can get a lot of money like if I really like the shoe I'm gonna rock the shoe regardless of how much it's going for but if you're sitting on a shoe and it's just like I uh, I agree I just don't think you like it as much like for example like I said with the blazers like those are the only off whites I've ever kept all the other off whites I sold I never cared about any of the other ones I yeah. like the fact that they did a blazer I thought that was cool because blazers normally don't resale you know like I have a bunch of different blazers that don't resale and you know, their bricks. Even now, like seeing like milk crates, right? That was a shoe I've always wanted, the the Nike SB Blazer milk crate, right? But it goes for so much fucking money, I'll never buy that shoe, right? Yeah. And like, there's a couple sneakers, like Varsity Purples. I sold my Varsity Purples like probably five years ago. And that was one of my first sneakers. It was a, just an SB Blazer, all suede upper, um, you know, and I sold that and seeing that go for like three, four hundred dollars. It's not something that I'd spend that kind of money on. Um, but it's also something there are tons of shoes that I do like or that I came up liking that I would for I sure reach like Tiffany Dunst. Tiffany people to cop a shoe for resale. You always say the MSRP retail box price. Now if they pay resale, that's on them. Nike won't change a thing because they're deep in the resale game. I watched themselves. a few of your videos. Never have you once told people to cop a shoe for resale. You always say the MSRP retail price box. Now, if they pass resale, that's if they pay resale, that's on them. Nike won't change a thing because they're deep into the resale game themselves. It's different eras of sneakerheads who grew up differently, and majority of us will buy differently. <clears throat> OG sneakerheads will buy a UA young heads won't. That's kind of weird I, to say that because when I came into the game, I was the young cat that would buy a UA and Dells and Zaya and Bostic would never touch a UA. So I don't know how if it's if it did that. Now like I don't know, but I don't know about that one, Melvin. I'm just saying when I came in, no OGs, no OG was gonna do that shit. So I don't I don't know um, about. Uh, that I one. think that times are changing, man. I uh, really do. A lot of people think I'm I'm a crazy. You know, nut, I'm, nut I case, don't think you're crazy, but, like, but I like what people keep saying. If you're getting, if you get a, if you really want a shoe, like you've been wanting that shoe and you get that shoe, and then the thing you're thinking about is money. 
I don't think you really wanted that shoe. No, you didn't. Yeah, so then that's what I'm trying to say. Like, so you shouldn't even have that type of like this. I, I make that you wanted to resell it or something. Okay, but there's a part of me that disagrees only because, like, for example, this Q Kicks guy, right? He said, "But Jacob is a reseller, high beast." Like, I wouldn't consider. <laughs> like, I definitely consider. I play. I play into that for sure, right? But like, I paid for my mom's cancer treatment off reselling. No one's gonna. And people will say, "Well, why don't you? Just, why would you resell? Why don't you just get a job?" Like, no disrespect, I make more than, I have a friend who works very high up corporate Microsoft. I make more than her from reselling. So like, I get it, but like, I take care of six different people within my family all off of reselling. I take care of my mom, my stepdad, and four of my brother's kids, my brother who passed away. So it's like, I disagree with the idea. Like you can like a shoe, for example, Heineken's. I like Heineken's. I got them at a really reasonable price before they shot up in price. Now because of Dunk Hype, I'm gonna sell the Heineken. Like, why would I like they go for like five thousand dollars? I can literally pay my mom's rent for five months off that. And I just think it's like yeah, it's a very privileged mentality. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm privileged. I'm the current state that I live in, I'm privileged, right? Like I am able to make my money off reselling clothes. I'm able to live in a fairly nice apartment, get the clothes that I want. But the whole idea or concept that like money does not mean shit, like Money is important the second you have to take care of your family or the second your family gets sick and you your family can't provide for themselves. So the idea, or con I just disagree with that. If I get a shoe that's reselling for $2,000, I'm going to look at that like that's two months of my mom's rent. Or do I want to wear a pair of sneakers? Do I want to pay my mom's rent for two months or do I want to put a pair of sneakers on my feet? I like sneakers. There's a lot of sneakers. Like I said, those Nigel Sylvester's could go for $2,000. I would still want to buy those just to support Nike doing a Jordan one with a BMXer, just as an old BMX for myself. But the idea or concept, like, and yo, I'm gonna be honest with you. Do you do yeah. understand that the majority of resellers are not you? They don't have. But I don't. That, but it's almost I, just pure greed. I think most that's of what them. we. I think that's what we see. But I, I, so I run a. Uh, I'm not gonna say the name of it or promote it. So I run a cook group, right? And I talk to a lot of kids that resell to help their parents or resell to help their situation. I do agree. Like when I see people like, for example, the Ann, Ann Hebert situation, I see that. And of course I see that. And I think like, damn, that's kind of weak, right? Because it becomes a situation. Thankfully I got into reselling at a point where you didn't need a bunch of money. Like you could go wait in line, right? Like lines were still a thing where you could go wait in line at Supreme and you could cop something. You could flip it right out the store and you can flip money. Like it's really easy to actually kind of make money with, very little capital when i see resellers like that and then saying stupid shit like oh yeah just hit up the plug right like no matter what i, I can't mm. lie i think that shit's corny because you didn't first of all you're using slang terms that you shouldn't be using when you're <laughs> buying and selling fucking sneakers but second of all like i see that and yeah obviously the dude has more access to <laughs> you know his mom's finances where he's able to basically take a loan against his mom's card and then resell all the sneakers. Yeah. Or, and that's with a lot of sneakers. You know, you look at Ben Kicks, right? Uh, the f gang member just beating up fucking people taking pictures with him or whatever. Um, but like, when I see stuff like that, I can't lie. Like, yeah, it bothers me. But at the same time, like, I don't think that's a representation of all sneakers I, or all re sneaker resellers. I think that's just kind of what we box them all into. Because like, look at Q Kicks. That's exactly what he boxed me into without even knowing my situation, without knowing that I provide for my family. The first thing he yeah. said, oh, he's a reseller. Hype. Uh, you know? Uh, what the fuck? Uh, Spooks, <clears throat> Spooks says, nobody gives a fuck about you helping your family out. You're breaking the regular man, a regular man back with this. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry you can't copy <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know... <laughs> I feel like uh, Jake, I feel like Jacob's a regular man too. At the end of the day, I feel like we're all regular people. Oh shit! Don't make me laugh. Um, <laughs> but, wait, yeah. Yo, are you used here. to getting trolled, uh, Jacob? What's up? Jacob loves this type of are stuff. Are you used to getting? I'm about to say, are you used to getting trolled a little bit? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, my boy uh, Slim asked if I bot or if I'm manual. Yeah. I'm manual. Um, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not opposed to botting though, because I'm a firm believer. Like you adapt, you know. So. I probably will bot eventually because it's uh, getting to the point where it's getting really hard to maintain manual. But currently, I've never ran De a bot myself. Hey, Dales. Yo, what up? It's different eras for sneakerheads who grew up differently. Majority of us will buy differently. OG sneakerheads will buy UAs. Young heads won't. No, nah, it's definitely different. You know, I mean, 
look, a lot of sneakerheads now, they consider this a business. Like, from what I take from um, Jacob, Jacob's running a business, and the, and the love for sneakers is kind of secondary. Which, which that's just my, what I'm getting from you. I've never really, um, this is my first time getting any kind of vibe off you. So I may have you totally sure. off. Um, and like, you know, some people aren't going to like what Jacob says about reselling. And some people may also, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Some people may say, okay, you're helping your mom, your dad, your everyone. Why not get an effing job? Why, why are you um, buying all these shoes? You're messing up the game. Like. People are, that's not really how I feel, but I know there's got to be people that feel that way too, you know? For sure. But I don't, like I said, like, I don't, I make a lot more off of reselling than I do getting a job. I make more than a Microsoft corporate, like, leave corporate position. I know that much. That's, that's all I know, you know? And so, like, yeah, but people, what's the, what's people that, can, that's people can argue. Hustle, what's up? That's not, that's a side hustle. That's not a career reselling sneakers, in my opinion. If I'm making more than someone who's ma who works who's making a six figure yeah, salary, wait, that not Jacob. A wait, wait, wait. So one thing is because Jacob, I don't know my damn stuff. Are you pushing sneakers or clothing more? I thought you I were... will say I do mo I do mostly clothing, to be fair. Okay. Because it's it's really hard for me to cop sneakers. I would say like when it comes to sneakers, like I probably sell like maybe one a week. Like I don't sell like I'm not pushing out major amounts of product. I'm just in playing devil's advocate in terms of <laughs> reselling. I think people like if, in my opinion, if you, as a man, I don't care where you are. If you prioritize the sneakers you put on your feet over someone putting food on their on their family's table, I just think you're a weirdo. Like I used to be homeless. Like I used to actually sleep outside, and I know no one's gonna give a fuck. I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm just saying, like, why why were you sleeping outside? Because I got into a situation with my stepfather. Because I because I'm just trying. I mean, I don't mean to get in your business, but no, no. I used to I used to, I used to do a lot of bad shit, so my stepdad kicked me out of the house. I used to not be so great of a kid. What 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 were you doing, if you don't mind asking? Uh, damn, damn, <laughs> damn, <devils? laughs> No, nah, I'm uh, just saying. Like he's talking a lot about his personal life, and it's like you know, we, unless we hear what what his personal life is, how do we? Like it's we're trying to get to know you, right? I don't think I'm being crazy. yeah. That's fair. Um. So I've had my own struggle with uh, drugs as well okay. as uh, theft. Like I used to uh, rob houses and break into people's houses. Um, yeah, it goes with and it. So, and so I used to do a lot. So essentially. Oh, hold on, Jacob. Hold on. Hold on. Because I M M M K up? MK, he's making six figures, uh, I guess, of a week based off of clothing and his cook group. Reselling yeah, yeah, clothing. Clothing. Supreme. I, I Supreme. And, clothing. Yeah, this that, is a whole that was different. That one of the things I did Not say, shoes. Like not shoes. Clothing. Yeah. Most of my money comes from reselling supreme uh not so much palace or kith but i've i've always said like if you go if you really watch my supreme videos from start to finish i say in a lot not of those one, videos, not one shoe no not, not, not one like. shoe not one there shoe are there are things they make that i like but supreme has never ever been one of those brands that i've said this is my top five favorite brands when i originally started my youtube channel my goal was to show off more low-key brands and when i got out of the military um that was when my stepdad got sick and then right after he got sick my mom got sick both of them uh. I know it's cancer. So then I'm like, well, fuck, like I'm not, my parents don't have money, right? And so I kind of, I kind of adapted and I've always been into streetwear. Like I was into, I was into Supreme already, but I wasn't trying to focus on Supreme because kind of like the whole, my whole argument against the whole UA thing, I felt like bringing attention to them is just continuing a thing that I think is kind of weird. Like you don't need to wear Supreme to be cool. You don't need a box logo. I don't have a single Okay, box that's what I was going to that Yeah, I, see, now you're filling in a lot of the blanks. A lot of people don't know exactly your story. Thank yeah. you. That's all I wanted to know, Jake. Jacob, that's your channel, Jacob Star, by the way? Uh, mm -hmm. The Star Life, the Jacob Star, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look you up. Man. He's in Seattle. He's, 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 he's from Seattle. He's from Seattle, Dills. Tacoma, okay, more importantly. Cool. Tacoma. Tacoma, yeah. So Yo, we're going to have to definitely, Tacoma. we're definitely going to have to do it, this again when I have my wits about me because I'm <laughs> dying. <laughs> literally I was like dying. that yesterday <laughs> i was broken <laughs> but uh i did want to you know ask you like what is the problem with people copping you ways anyways we're just trying to uh not get our our shit pushed in no you know i don't I mean? <laughs> yeah and i don't agree i don't like i said i don't have a problem necessarily with people copying you ways i just think that i just kind of wonder like 
like for example, I know why I, I said earlier I can't judge because I'm a I'm a cog in the machine as well, right? Like I promote Supreme when I just said I don't think Supreme's my favorite brand, but if you look at my channel, a lot of the content is Supreme, right? So I understand I'm a I'm a contributing to the same factor where I'm promoting a brand where I disagree with some of the things that they do, right? I I think Supreme does a lot of the same game that Nike does about trying to balance that hype and like trying to create hype so that way people can't get the product and then they feel like oh fuck they they're gamifying the process as opposed to like going to 35th Ave and copying some dope shit they like right 35th Ave mm. is a skate shop out here anyways um so I'm not I'm not casting judgment at all I'm just saying like what's in like I know my reason for it my reason is because you know I'm putting food on the table for my mom right so and it, whether that's justified is up to the person you know whether it's up to yeah. whoever is the individual right and so i think that's the biggest issue like for example i know for a fact that this wasn't how i provide for my mom i would not be buying supreme every week i wouldn't you know if i went and got a corporate job at microsoft or you know amazon or whatever and i wanted to sit there and report to work every day then that's what i would do i wouldn't i would just cop the personals that i get which i get i keep like maybe a couple things from each season and then I keep it moving. I resell the rest of it. You know, I resell the box logos, all that shit. Hey, I have a question for you. So you don't have a, a full time job? You just go. Most do I don't. I don't work. Hold on a second. Hold on. We got a donation from Melvin. Babies isn't spending. So Melvin again, man. No damn shoes. With facts. Melvin says most OGs in their late 30s, early 40s, 80s babies isn't spending 500 and up on no damn shoes. Fuck out of here. But the young heads will facts. Nah, I definitely agree with you on that, Melvin. I'm just saying that the OG sneakerheads, I don't know if all, like when you said they're buying UA, I, I don't know. I, like I said, that's why I said Dells. Like, I don't know. I don't think Dells is or Bostic nah. or a lot of the OGs are doing that. Now, I can't but speak I for everyone. Judge. I don't judge. Yeah, I, like, we're not well, judging nobody here. Like I said, this, yeah. whole, this whole live was not really supposed to even be about mainly UA. It was about brand loyalty. But I do feel like a lot of people say fuck the brands due to them not feeling like the brand is paying back loyalty with the situations we're in right now with resale. Okay, let me reread your title. Why brand loyalty shouldn't exist or should it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Redo the title. What? What yeah. is a brand loyalist? Is that someone who just only wears one thing? Uh, that's how I usually look at it. Yeah, like someone who's who's usually just rocking that brand. Checks over stripes, or you know, what I'm saying, uh, usually jumped over jump man like this playing in, into that type of thing there's people that only rock sbs there's people that only rock jordans people only rock nikes you know what i'm saying like when i met zaya he was like barclays only and then he was also dunks you know what i'm saying when i met mm -hmm. uh fucking uh foamer i mean not foamer um when i met uh, uh uh teddy he was like adidas only you know what i'm saying like that's just how even like dell's like dell's for like when i first saw you you was heavy jordan heavy like yeah. just jordan you know what i'm saying um bostic is only jordan like that's it that's it. Fact. So, so um, what do you have to do to be a brand uh, disloyal <laughs> to the brand? Like, just buy, well, it, buy all different types. Yeah, yeah, and it's not even for that brand. Yeah, it's not even. And yeah, and it's not even like a, a a title for that. I'm just saying at this point that we're in, like what we're what we're dealing with now in today's society, this is a reason why we shouldn't even be on this. Like this is why this shit should not even no longer exist. And the reason also on top of that, the question is why was if anybody kind of disagrees, they can feel free to hop in and, and kind of speak on that. Um, and how did this get on to the, okay, so this well, steered it got its into, way into. It, it, got, it, mostly, it mostly steered its way into the UAs, I think, because I was actually Jacob was in the chat, out, yeah. But, I wanted, but yeah. I wanted to talk to you guys before because, um, like I said, like I said in the very beginning, right, I don't have a problem with anyone wearing UAs. I still watch your guys' videos. When, I, when the video pops up, I still hit the like button on it, like. I'm a oh that's what's in, up. In my opinion, I'm a firm believer that if you have a differing opinion and you you disagree with someone, I would much rather listen to the people that disagree with me so that way I can that's that that's how you find out if you truly believe in something. If you listen to the people and truly really try to take in the people that you disagree with because if you just sit here and listen to the people that already agree with you, you're not growing. Yeah, so, you just getting yeah. a whole you bunch know. of sweet nothings in your ear. I exactly, agree. it's just an echo chamber. So I listen to people that disagree, and I listen to the other side and I think it's fascinating and when I saw the uh Tony's original title with like my real problems with UAs, I like I clicked it because I've been just like, oh man, I've been watching a lot of content on this. I think it's in, I think it's interesting, and so you know, and I at the time I was uh, so you you probably watch my What's you up? probably watch my stuff and see me trash and resellers all the time. Yeah, but it's yeah. like there's gonna <laughs> there's gonna be 
exceptions. I mean, I can't necessarily try to cherry pick the people that are doing it for um, a reason outside of themselves. Like you, you're taking care of your family and stuff. When all we see are people stacking up trophy rooms to the ceiling and back door and, and no, none of us are hitting. And so you say that you make more money than a person with a regular job, but the people with the regular jobs are what's supplying you with the ability to do that in a sense. For sure. And I'm not knocking so, people with the regular job either. I'm just saying that like it wouldn't make sense. Like someone said, like change your skill set, blah, blah, blah. Like I make enough, I make a decent living where it wouldn't make sense when I have a family to provide for, to provide for them less. Just so people like at the end of the day, I get it. But my biggest thing is you don't, no one needs a sneaker on their foot. Like, I don't care how much, like people can say, oh, I'm not an OG, blah, blah. I've been in the sneakers since 2008. That was my first pair of sneakers. It was a pair of the Space Tigers, Nike SB mm. Dunk Space Tigers. Um, I've never considered myself even to be a sneakerhead because I've told Tony this before. I said, in my opinion, a sneakerhead has to have a certain level of knowledge about sneakers. I just like shoes. I've liked shoes since 2008. That's what really, when I first really got into, into sneakers, um, I started wearing skateboarding sneakers because at the time I was BMXing. And so uh, if you're familiar with BMXing, like having thicker sold sneakers is a lot better. They're a lot more durable. They last longer. So when Nike started making SBs, that's what I was copying, right? But in my, so I'm, I've never called myself like a sneaker head per se. And maybe that's why I have that opinion where like, for me, providing for my mom trumps wearing any pair of sneakers. Like I'd sell every single article of clothing I have and wear the same fucking shirt and sweatpants every single day before not putting, you know, not providing for my family. That's kind of like the bigger thing for me. I, I still like sneakers. I have pieces in my collection that yeah. I don't ever plan on selling and I hope I never have to sell, you know, like sell. Um, I definitely are, you ever, are you ever worried that like maybe one day Supreme will be viewed as, as the next like FUBU or Rock Aware or all that shit and just fall off and then... No, there's always going to, not necessarily because there's always going to be a brand that takes its spot. There's tons of brands that resale. I mean, FTP resales. At the end uh -huh. of the day, bro, at the end of the day, it's not about the, like, at the end of the day, people like, in my opinion, like Jacob, like me, we're not people that are, it may look like we're dependent on it, but like we've adapted. Jacob has been doing this shit for fucking seven some years, as long as I have. When I first saw Jacob, it was like karma loop shit. So Jacob wasn't <laughs> buying Supreme. So like... People like Jacob know how to adapt. So if Supreme wants to die, he'll fucking find something else that will be something good for him. That's just how I believe in. I believe in it, him as a person. MK, I also think MK asked a similar question. So what if your hustle dried up? What are you going to do? My hustle will never dry up. And the reason that for that is because there will always be people that want to pay a ridiculous price or there will always be people, be people that if they don't pay the original price, they'll, they'll go buy fakes and they'll represent the brand and they'll contribute towards the consumerist mindset where I'll have mm -hmm. a market to sell my product to regardless. And, like, and, that's, no, and that's no disrespect, but yeah. no matter what, people are going to put that Nike swoosh on their foot. They're going to put that Supreme Box logo on their chest. Yeah. They're gonna, and as long as they're doing that, I'm I'm in business. So if you want to, like, I'm, that's why I don't care if people- See, there you go. Business. There's, that's a- Like, I don't- I have That's no another care. reason you're an exception, because that's another reason you're an exception, because I, I don't think I've ever heard a reseller try to say that the UAs are helping them. Oh, for sure. Never. It's anything that markets the hype. <laughs> well, that, you know, like, that's, I've, I've said it. Me. I said it as well, though. Like, I that think it helps I, resellers? No, no, no. It helps my... You no, no, no. It helps, it, helps my, it helps me as a viewer. Because I think, I think MK has said that, you know, huh. people are getting mad that uh, UA videos are getting the same views or taking the views. And I'm like... You know, there'll always be a market for UA and there'll always be a market for real because people are going to need the, they're going to need the real to compare to the UA. They're going to need the UA to compare to the real. So there's always going to be some sort of market. You can't take UA out, nor can you take out the real. Like, it's not like, it, it, that's why like something like that can never, like they need one of another. As long as people um, care about, as long as people care about the brand, then there's going to be a market. the motherfucking so, arena in the know, building. And obviously like, and it's gotten to a point now where like, you know, when I first started this, the majority of my, you know, and still I would say the majority of my money comes from reselling, but obviously because my YouTube has grown and because other things have, you know, come along, like I've been able to get brand deals. I've been able to do a lot of things through starting off reselling, you know? So it's yeah. like, it's not like I'm just making a hundred percent of my money now reselling, you know, but that's still probably the largest portion of my income currently, you know? Hey, I have a question for you, Jacob. 
Yeah, so hold if, on. If you if 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 you said that you're able to actually get like a like a good or a good job, like a corporate job, why don't you do both? Because uh, I mean, it, it you know, a, a, there is sorry. a difference between reselling and a career, man. I'm telling you, you can't resell for your entire life. I don't think you can. I, I really don't. Uh, and you don't have it, it would be pretty shit. stressful, probably, once I you hit say, 50. I say, I, retirement, I you, like, like, you need to have probably, a job. Like, no? I could probably not work and not resell and pay my bills for, like, the next eight years currently. Like, really? I, Like, there's a lot of – that's the yeah. thing is, like, people who talk about reselling don't understand – there's good margins to be made. Like, I don't buy anything, like, for the most part. Like, I, I mean, I guess there are examples of things that I haven't sold that I know I could sell for a lot of money. But the other thing, too, is, like, I make money outside of just selling Nike and Supreme. You know, I resell vintage gear. You know, like, for example, you know, I found this at a thrift store, right, for $5, right? Because Justin Bieber decided to put this on his little body, right? I shouldn't say little. I'm probably smaller than Justin Bieber is. This shirt currently sells for about two thousand to three thousand dollars. I've been I've what, been offered what shirt is that? two point two k for this t shirt alone. Right? What shirt is that? I can't see. Is there Nirvana? Is Jacob, Nirvana? Jacob, we 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 all know the margins that can be made. The problem is, is that we don't care about that stuff. No, 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 for sure. I'm just saying that, like, as long as people feed into creating hype around things, whether it be them wearing fakes or not, that's my whole point. Is that it's good, you know. And in terms of, and I was mostly asking about, I was mostly responding to Dell's when Dell's re response when he said, you can't make a living off that. Like, I know tons of people that don't even do Supreme and sneakers, just do selling vintage, which I also do. And they make, you know, well over six figures just off that, you know, that have yeah, whole vintage, lot of years off selling vintage, vintage clothes. Yeah, I see the crazy. vintage game is serious. Yeah. And hey, listen, I may learn something new today. I, I don't know everything. I always say I'm not the I'm I'm the sneaker out, not the freak, sneaker expert. Freak neat you know tees, I mean? like, those, I may learn something those old freak neat tees from Atlanta in the nineties, them shits going for like two, three hundred dollars. Old really? fucking yeah, them like old Tupac album tees or anything Chicago Bulls from nineteen ninety six, them shits is going for like five hundred, six hundred dollars. The vintage shit, like vintage yeah, I have is, a few t shirts. People have offered me money. They've watched my old videos and they said, Yo, do you still have that t shirt? And they're like old, like, like, like I guess yes, I guess the UA version of that, and I wouldn't even call it UA, but the finesse version of that is like what um American uh, not sorry, American, what, uh, Urban Outfitters does. The, you know, Urban Outfitters will make the the remake the vintage tees. Yeah, and that what, what do you have to say to that though, Jacob? Like, how does that affect you? Because there's that's the thing get... is even that even a, a better example or better comparison to UAs is there's people that will actually go get single stitch tees manufactured. They'll sit there and they'll try to age the t-shirt and then they'll try the same printing technique or tr try to make it look similar and then resell it as a vintage tee. It's referred to as a bootleg. Um, but but the people, because I know a few people that do that vintage th shit at a high level um, and um, they, they they could tell the difference because there's different style t-shirts, the way they're stitched. Yeah. Like like these guys are like real professionals with it. Like I don't know what, what the hell the type of stitching is on some of these old school tees. But they'll be like, oh, this is like a double stitch. And this is a, this yeah, stitch. It's, it's, and whatever the stitch is, it's worth more money. Like the old, old. Teams. It refers to this, right? So it refers to like on your sleeve. You mm -hmm. see like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just one stitch that goes through. Yes. Right. And so like, and they, there's like single stitch top and bottom. And I don't, I mean, I won't get into too much detail, but yeah, there's a lot of things that go into it, but there's people who will fake that too. The harder thing is that when you're faking older vintage tees like that, there's certain printing techniques from that era, like from the 80s and 90s, yeah. and certain materials that were used that just are either extremely hard to find now or non-existent. So you can't really, it's a lot harder to fake that than it is a, a Nike sneaker that's currently being manufactured. Like right now, as we are having this discussion, there is someone overseas making a, a Nike sneaker, you know, like that's currently being made manufacturing 24 seven. These shirts just aren't made anymore. And a lot of the processes that are used to make these shirts you know, like for example, this all over print type shirt isn't, this isn't a uh, sublimation dyed. This is like a big ass print roller where they basically roll the graphic on. Okay. Um, and that they just don't exist anymore. There's very few of them in, exi in existence currently, which is why they don't make tees like that. That's wild. Yeah, definitely agree with the, this, the, this, 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 the, the way they made tees are different. Even like the sizing is easy to duplicate, but like a lot of old tees are boxy. They're way more boxier than they are nowadays. You know, uh, 
the the, the even the uh, even like these the old prints they're the old prints how they age is hard to duplicate you can get a vintage look on a print but it this ain't the same as the actual the stress that happens over the years of time from wearing even it even like this is a good example i have a braves one. i have a couple like, braves I know this is mostly sneakers but like this shirt right here a lot of people are trying to fake this shirt so look when i bought this shirt i bought it for a lot of money I bought it for 1.2k, right? I've been offered 2.5 for it. What? <laughs> That's right. It's, it's Troll, like a, Troll's got look, another look another world to, to be, get entering. To be <laughs> fair, tell us, tell us about the t-shirt, please. Akira, okay, that's the t-shirt. Mind you, that? I've already been offered over double what I paid, right? Is that yeah. shit bulletproof? Uh, no, but I mean, I knew it was gonna go up. <laughs> I knew it was gonna go up in value because it's just a really popular piece, and at the time. Like no one was accepting offers for even a thousand dollars. So, so I knew hold it was on, book. let me ask a question. Not, but let, I bought the Hold on, Jacob. Let me ask you something because I, I would like to hear Troll's opinion. I feel like Troll's opinion is different on this one. Troll, yeah. you have way more respect, though. I would say, I would guess, for vintage because it's actually holds some type sort of years behind it, rather than something that's dropped last week and is going for. Yeah, a especially if the techniques used to make that shirt or the ink or the printer or the something. You know what I mean? It's just like an, a lost relic of time. Like you just can't get it made was, that way. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about before. And we were when we were arguing about not having a market at all. There shouldn't be. I had remember I told you like I felt like in my opinion that I felt like a pair of eighty five Jordan one should hold some sort of value because of the fact that it's an eighty five shoe. Like it's a yeah, it's fair. a collection at that point. Yeah. It is an antique. So these prices are insane. But how old is that T Jacob? Uh, the which one? The Akira T? Yeah. Uh, that came out in the late. That came out in I think late eighties, like eighty eight, eighty nine. That's a that T is that old. Yeah, and what's and this is where it gets down to like uh, the fuck? down to like manufacturing and knowing different things. So like a lot of T's that come out from that era wouldn't normally be double stitch. But if you're familiar with European manufacturing, in Europe they introduced double Jesus. stitch uh, about like ten years before they did in the U S. So like this is a European tour tag. So a lot of like bands when they would tour in Europe from that era they'll use this tag and a lot of the ones from europe are double stitch so it's like there's a lot of different things that you can know in terms of like if you pay attention to the market you'll know like okay like like i said i bought that for resale and it's currently going for you know i saw one sell the other day for 2.9 k two thousand that's a great zach, zach. A t-shirt wait hold on a second it's cutting out it's for some reason every time someone enters it like zach, cuts out for uh, i am buying i am buying pokemon cards and i don't have uh, people paying money for shit. I, I i'm not here to disagree I'm having fun, and I was, and I still got my old Pokemon cards from the '90s that got value as well. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing, or do I have a problem with it? So you know, you got to get with that digital art now. That's that's the, the one that back. that's the one that's starting to scare me, man. That's some shit I don't like. I got to take some time. I, I talked already to, copped a few, man, and they worth like a few thousand. Dells, do you holler? Do you talk to um? <laughs> do you talk to Fran at all, Dells? Like, are you? Cool? Yeah, that's my guy. Okay, yeah, yeah I need to holler at Fran because Fran's yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah, I already copped like the Joker. I already, that huh. thing's selling for thousands on. Jesus, that's it. I want to. I want to acknowledge art. this. Jordan said he doesn't know what Akira is. Yes, I do. It's an anime movie. This character right here is Tetsuo. I will say I'm not the biggest. I don't care about Akira as much. My favorite animes would be like Tenshi Muyo, um, Helsing, which I also have teased for. Um, but Jordan Edmund, you're a prime example of someone that I think you're a weirdo. Like you're instantly judging someone you don't know me. So I think you're, you're no different than the person that's looking at someone that's wearing UAs that's like casting judgment on that person because you think you know them because they put a pair of fake sneakers on their feet. Like to me, that's just weirdo activity. Yeah, that, this comment had me laughing a minute ago. He said, whatever. <laughs> he said, whatever black people wear, you're going to buy it. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Back to this two thousand dollar T shirt. Oh man, what's up, and, MK? And hold on, Jacob. Jacob, hold on, Jacob. Uh, MK, favorite. can you hear MK real quick? MK, talk because I can hear you, MK, but he might not. I can't hear him. Wait, oh shit. Sure. I something. can hear you too, but it's it's low. Say something, MK. Talk. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, there you go. He Listen. has a, he has a question for you. MK said something to you, Jacob. No, nah, I was talking about that that, that shirt. He was talking about that was two thousand dollars. You got it. Uh yeah, which one you mean the That's the Akira shirt. shirt. Yeah, this one. That's your two thousand dollars? Uh well it just sold for two point nine. Get which, the fuck you know what would be crazier? Idiot. A lot of you guys might even be even crazier to see this, but or to think this, but if you guys there's currently an auction being ran today. Jake, on uh, Jordan apologized, Jacob. Oh Jordan, I love you. He said that he said anyway, OG. So look, um <laughs> there's currently an auction being ran, right? This dude uh nineteen eighty something called his name's Chris, right? 
there's a Wall Street Journal uh, ad about a vintage Disney tea. It's a it's just an all over print genie tea that sold for six thousand um, dollars. So like you know think like that where it's like there's teas that are going for even more than that. You know there's there's a market in in clothes in general, and that's why I said like when you asked you know what are you ever worried about your hustle drying up? Like I'm not just focused on supreme or sneakers i my my true passion to be honest i like vintage that's where i started okay. even, even back in the karma loop hall days mm. like i started doing trips to the thrift i started doing trips to the thrift with paul and i still do trips to the thrift that's like my true most of the stuff that i keep in my collection are vintage pieces you know because i think that most of the clothes that we attach to or that we have some sort of uh attachment towards usually resembles our childhood whether it be like a pair right, of sneakers right. you know you look back at the sneakers you used to want you know i remember going to northwest snowboards and always wanting the tiffany dunks and i'll never buy those i mean even back then in 2009 they were reselling for like seven eight hundred dollars now they're because of dunks they're going for fuck i don't even know probably like two or three thousand yeah fuck that but i always wanted those shoes i'll never pay two or three thousand for them but you know th that's a sneaker that i wanted because of now, my history <coughs> Jay, so so, so let me speak on the ventures tees right quick yeah. Let me ask a quick question. Let me say one. It's a quick question. You got. I let you roll oh, out there. Okay. Jacob, right. with the vintage stuff, when you wear it one time, the value does it increase, decrease, or what? How's it work? How's that work? Right. It depends. I mean, obviously, dead stock anything is gonna be worth more. Um, Damn. and like there are things like, uh, but that's been but worn, like, right? It's the, been thirty years of that T-shirt. It's been worn, right? There are there or are forty there are years that you come across that have like this is if this has been worn, it's probably been worn like three times. Like a lot of stuff will be left in a box and forgotten about. And you'll see stuff okay. when you're thrifting. Sometimes you'll even come, I've come across boxes of like vintage Sonics gear that was, you know, never sold or never, you just randomly found in like a, a storage unit. So it's not always worn, but the vintage community also, just like any community does kind of use words. Like if it's really worn, they'll be like, oh yeah, this is distressed. You know, like, uh, perfect distressing which is, is their way of saying like it's got holes in it but i still want to sell you this shirt for a lot of money they try to um, sprinkle sugar on shit on it, okay. to make it exactly, hey, exactly. So everyone does bro. every, every so marketer every person who's selling a product is gonna you know try to make their product sound better and yeah they definitely do that in the vintage community that's the single stitch thing like when me and you were when you were talking about single stitch and double stitch Single stitch isn't as good as double stitch, but you'll see you like high end brands try to sell fire, single fire. stitch tees now because there's like a little bit of hype around single so, stitch. Yeah, so, salute to Dot B in the I building. Salute, that. salute to Dot B for the fucking 199. MK, you got the floor. Go ahead. So, so <laughs> let me hop out though, because man, right, I Trump. can't. Yo, Trump, Jacob, <laughs> next time. Yeah, I feel better, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jacob. Next time, uh, uh, Tony right, has a discussion, bro. Hopefully, you pull up and when I'm, uh, when <laughs> no, I'm for ready. sure. It was good. <laughs> <bent. laughs> yeah. Drink some water, brother. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my question with the uh, God damn two thousand dollars for a vintage shirt. Say, like, like my thing. I'm not. I'm not knocking your hustle or anything. I never even knew this shit existed. To tell you the truth. And like I said, I respect everybody, so I don't try to drag anybody into what I do. But God damn, two thousand dollars for a shirt! Say you buy the shirt, like people actually wear this stuff after they buy uh, it. Yeah, yeah, some some people definitely will just spend a lot of money, and yeah, they'll wear it. And then they'll, I mean, some people also buy shirts off speculation. You know, like when I bought mm. that Akira tee, everyone. If you can go back <laughs> to the video I made on YouTube, and people were like, "Oh, you're stupid. You paid way too much money." But I've already been offered over double. You know, so the right. initial response is, of course, like, why is this idiot spending, you know, one over a thousand dollars on a T-shirt? That's fucking stupid. Right. You know, but I bought the shirt knowing or having good confidence that the market Bro, would go up, and also knowing it's I would in like recuperate you know, some of my cold costs water just and off of the video alone. People trip you know? cause the burn holes. Yeah, see, like my 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 whole logic with this shit, and the same thing with UA sneakers. Like, like I said, I'm not trying to get anybody on UA. This is just my logic with it. Like, say if I bought that shirt from you for two for two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I go out and get a fight with somebody. Somebody rip that shit up. How do you think I'm gonna feel after something like that? This is just my logic behind everything that I do. Like, I like I genuinely love sneakers, and like me with the UA sneakers, I just want the design of it. Like. I'm I'm not knocking what you do. Like I don't care about the the vintageness of 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 shirts and shit. Although I know there's a market out there, for yeah, that that type of stuff. I, I I respect that. I don't care about that. But I just want people to understand the reason why I do this stuff because it's because I respect, you know, just the art of the shoe. You know, I like looking at the shoe. I like wearing it occasionally. 
And like I said, with the thing with the t-shirt, say I go get in the fight, get the scrapping out here. Somebody rip that shit up. That's like twenty five hundred dollars blown. For sure. That's cotton. It's that's, that's 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 my logic behind all this shit. Like it's just material BS. But at the same time, I do understand there's value in the stuff. I don't want people to think that you know I don't I don't respect the value and people doing what they do, like collecting shoes for value and stuff like that. I do. But me primarily what I do is I just want it for the art of the shit. And like a t-shirt or something like that. I can't, I can't do that. 2500 Like moss, <laughs> I can put that shit in my closet. Like moss could get to that shit or something. And I feel like my money's blown, man. But I respect, I respect what you're doing. Like I have, I'm not hating or anything. It's just I just want people to understand where I'm coming from logically behind what I do with like UA sneakers and shit. Yeah, I mean, I and I get that because I think like, and there might be some people in this chat that disagree, but like, for example, one thing that I think is interesting about sneakers now right or even just in general now like you see like a the air force one obviously that's kind of a shoe of all people right mm -hmm. like right. whether you're like a 13 year old TikToker <laughs> or whether you're an old sneakerhead, right mm -hmm. but like you see a lot of people now who are getting the sneakers or into that community where like they their air forces are super dirty right and me like being that i got into sneakers kind of like buffalo the, exchange in la been me, selling like, vintage like, items around 2008 Mm. When I was in high school, every it was all about keeping your Air Force super clean. Yeah. You know, Facts. doubling That's up your sock right? and wearing your sock, like flipping your, you know, like making your, the tip of your sock looser and then using your sock as kind of like a, so, so it doesn't crease. Yeah. You know, so like in general, I think when you wear any sneaker, right, and you kind of go out, mm. like I still have that mentality of like, oh, I need to keep my sneakers <sighs> just because that's the era that I grew up in. Definitely. Oh, hell yeah. You know? um, Definitely. And so, but I think now a lot of people don't have the mentality. So even with vintage tees, right, they don't necessarily care as much. I would understand if they were to get into a fight. I don't think they really think about, oh, what if I get into a fight, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And if they did, it's just like anything, you know, you just, that's your L, you know. You But if you're flipping and if you're buying and selling vintage constantly, like you're going to come through other vintage tees. And I try to tell everyone who's into vintage, you know, you're going to have another tee, you know. Right, like you right. may not have, you know, the crazy three, $4,000 tee, but you're going to come across vintage tees all all day if you're really searching you know you're spending your time. wow i think people that are buying two thousand dollar vintage tees they're not getting in, in the fights they're not in them kind of environments <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? yeah no i'm just like, saying man if it, if it were yeah. if it were to but happen you, not like, it, yeah. you get a little hole in it when you smoking or something a little ash drop yeah so you get out get in, get in out your car and that shit snag on to something your car. <laughs> when you, I work, Yo, you know what's crazy though <laughs> You know what I know too with this with the shirt stuff because as I said I know a few people that do that heavy. What's popular too, from my understanding, is the actual vintage bootleg concert tees, like That's the ones that are yeah. official. There's like wow. the ones that like the bootleggers outside of the venues back exactly. in the days, exactly in wow. the parking lot. Like them shits, if it's the, like the old tees, well, yeah. one stitch, double stitch. Well, that's what I was saying. Funny. Oh, well, yeah, you're talking about even back then, even on the old side. But that was what I was saying also how, how Urban Outfitters be doing. But well, I got a couple yeah. of donuts. Uh, Sluice to Rainer Braun for the four ninety nine, bro. Why people be tripping on if it's smoked in, like, I'm going to wash cold water and air dry it, or people trip on it because the burn holes? <laughs> I, I don't know what, I don't know what Rainer's meaning. I think it's more so the Jacob, but... Um, salute to Sick Kicks, also for the two dollars. Buffalo Exchange in LA, been selling vintage items. There's um, there's actual bootlegs that are worth money too. Like for example, like this right here. I mean, you guys probably remember this movie. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Those uh, old this, bootlegs. This is a bootleg. It's it is a vintage bootleg, so it's a bootleg that was made in the '90s. But these go for like five to six hundred dollars. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you saying that's a bootleg T? Yeah. So that means then UA could be possibly something someday. It could. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fucking crazy. That's why, like, that's why, like, to me, I don't. Yeah. That's why, like, I've said, I, I said, you know, I've seen people come in here and I've seen people give like a re reseller's perspective. The only, <sighs> the only downside to the the argument, the only fault for the UA that mm. would make it harder for it to ever resell like that mm. is the fact that it, they're they're mass manufactured. These weren't All mass right. manufactured because there wasn't a huge market for them, and now that these were created in the 90s it's harder to recreate these tees like you can recreate this on a double stitch like poly cotton blend so, mm. it's probably going to be shittier quality just because of the way that we manufacture now right so um but you know it's possible if 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 manufacturers no nah, i don't want it to be a thing. version <laughs> well, hold, a on, wait, I, hold on hold on hold on <laughs> let me go ahead and say that it is a thing now because right, for right. instance with me I have in my garage, I've shown it multiple times on my channel. 
I have a pair of Jordan 4 uh, UAs from back in the day when I was doing this shit. They're Jordan mm. 4 Oregon Ducks. And I don't know if... They don't even make them shits no more. Exactly, MK. They don't even make them no more. So I got them. So if someone was to want those, they would have some value in some sort of aspect. Wow. Because yeah. the fact that you can't get them, and even if they were to make them now, if the quality's not the same, right? and I got the good quality version from back then... Right, right. Wouldn't that be some sort of value even then? So yeah, it's value. that's like we say, it's value in everything. Yeah, it's you like know what's cars, worth the money? The t-shirts, everything, man. What's up? You know what may be worth money? Mm -hmm. The Sp the SpongeBob um um. <laughs> hey, I'm not, not no cap, kidding. no cap. I'm not even kidding. Nah, bro. not cap, no cap, no cap. They, no. They're worth money. Are you serious? No, I'm saying they, they might be, be like try over time. I like, try to find them. Remember, wow. remember those back in the days. I bet you. That they probably would be hard to buy. I almost want to look and see if I could buy a pair. Of fine. Don't, yeah, the motherfuckers on a uh, full size run got them, don't they? What'd you say? Uh, uh, the, the dudes on full size run up the uh, complex. I don't know, but I'm. I, oh yeah, they have a pair right in their yeah, background. Yeah, they got a pair in the background. Think about so. that though, Dells being able to buy a pair of those dead stock with the SpongeBob. You're talking I about that is worth money. That's what I'm saying. You're talking about oh nine like. Oh, yeah. like that's fucking crazy. I and I and, and the thing is, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't look down at that. That's weird. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I wouldn't look down at it. No, me too. If, I would love it. If I someone was cool. selling it for like three hundred, four hundred dollars, five hundred, I wouldn't be like, that's crazy. I'd be like, that was a weird time. Like that was a weird time. Oh, yeah. and, and think about the Jordan Seven, the see through, those. all the see through Jordans they were making back then and shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> that shit. Yeah, I mean, damn. I ain't. I mean, it is what it is. You know, in different communities of people that collect other type of stuff, for example, toys right. even, there's people that just collect like Star Wars bootleg toys, like weird shit sure. from back in the days. that are worth a fortune. Wrestling figures that were bootlegs from the 80s and 90s, worth a fortune. So, you know, it could happen where one day the SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants <laughs> Uh, uh, Dub Zero may be like a grail, like, you know, for some collectors. You know, yeah. as funny as it sounds, it could so, be worth thousands of dollars. If, hey, if you, better that, keep, you better keep them jaws, Tony. So, yeah, look, yeah, I yeah. think like this. If that Nike, if that menthol Nike dude with the jump side down that got sued, Dells, if that shit's worth mm -hmm. something, then anything could be worth anything. You feel me? Fact. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, look, uh, I remember a long time ago, right? Uh, I used to take bottles of a particular substance right and i would hang it upside down i'd cut the bottom off and then i would pour half of it out and i'd mix it with something else and then i would take a lighter and i'd burn it so that way it would like uh reseal the bottle so that way it would look like the seal's not cracked and i would sell it and i've always said this like god damn everything, everything <laughs> there's always something that resells and that's the thing is like i understand people have their negative opinion of like reselling sneakers reselling shirts reselling hype stuff but there are so many things in the world that, like, in my opinion, I agree. Like, if you are copping, you know, 200 <clears throat> pairs and you're just, like, all, like, gatekeeper or whatever, I understand looking at that and being like, man, that sucks, right? Looking at the Ann Hebert situation. Yeah, fuck um, that. I understand, like, looking at that. Because there's things that I want, you know, from Supreme or from, you know, there's certain blazers that release. I wanted those popcorn Air Forces. I wanted those for my personal. I still could not get those, even those like it only resold for fucking like thirty dollars more than what it was than retail. Yeah, but I couldn't even get hot. those for retail, right? So I understand looking at it and being like, "Damn, like that sucks." Those. But my my overall mentality is just you just you just chalk it up to the game. You just say, "All right, fuck it." Like it is what it is. I'm gonna move on. I didn't pay resale for that sneaker. There are sneakers I would pay resale for. I'm not like Tony, for example. Or or MK where I'm gonna say I'm not paying resale for sneakers. I just said mm -hmm. those Nigel Sylvester. Nah, I, I, I will pay resale if that shit is reasonable. Okay, for me, mm -hmm. if there's certain sneakers, nah, I, I probably would pay thing. unreasonable price. Yeah, same thing as MK. Like in certain, there's certain there's certain shoes. There, there's exclusions. Like I paid resale for my Kobe Six Grinches. I needed the shoe and I had to get it. But besides that, on anything else, maybe a hundred is the most for me. I, I, after that, I just not even. There's, not. there's shoes that I would pay upwards of two thousand dollars for. For sure. Jeez. That's the thing. It's like that, and that's why I think that my perspective is a little bit different because I feel like people are so on but, one side. But, of but Jacob, but Jacob, Jacob, let yeah. me ask you a quick question. What makes yes. you think the shoe is worth that in value to the to you though? So this is this is this is why. Look, there's two, there's two things. <laughs> there's, two, there's two things. So I like one, I think hopefully people by now can tell I like the history of this shit. So, like, uh -huh. when I talk about the manufacturing of vintage clothes, I genuinely like the history of shit, right? Right, right. So, there's two things. One, 
Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Kurt Cobain, uh, lead singer Nirvana. One of the reasons why I like the Converse mm-hmm. One Star yeah. so much is because if you guys go, you guys might be able to find pictures. I don't know if they actually have pictures of the shoes he was wearing, but when he committed yeah, suicide, he, allegedly, black and white ones he was on. wearing a pair of Converse One Stars. Mm-hmm. So that I've always liked that shoe. I have pairs of Converse One Stars in my collection. Like I like, for example, when they collaborated with Neighborhood, I got three pairs. I keep mm-hmm. the other two dead stock, right? Um, rest in peace, <clears throat> rest in peace, Keith from uh, Huff. But if you guys follow uh, SB Blazers at all, Huff and SB Blazers made yeah, I fuck with Blazers. amazing Blazer. I got four pairs of those. I bought them for fifty bucks a piece, um, all under retail because no one gave a fuck about them, right? But there are sneakers that just because of the attachment, if those sneakers sold for more, mm. I would pay that price for them just because they have like a piece. It's like a piece of history for me. Or like I said, okay. I don't care about Jordan ones at all for the most part. Oh, I nah, man, come on. pair of Jordan ones in my collection that I really give a fuck about, which are these ones right here. The I would pay $2,000 for these just off the fact that I would like to Sheesh. see I would like to see more BMXers collaborate on a sneaky. Like, you asked earlier if I skate. I told you, like, back in the day I used to BMX. Um, yeah. I would like to see Nike collaborate with more BMXers. So if a sneaker got to that point, right, where they were doing collaborations with Nigel Sylvester, for, you know, like they do with Travis Scott, where we see a new Travis Scott sneaker every fucking month, then I would be stoked off that. Like that would make me happy just mm. seeing you know Nike work with more BMXers. So that's th- those are my limitations, but there aren't many that I would pay that price for unless I felt like it was gonna go up. You know. Okay. I I I, I can dig it, but I can't I can't fuck with it. Man. <laughs> you know, y'all spent two thousand. It's gonna be on some vacation shit. Uh, I paid resale for this sneaker, and it currently goes for like six hundred more. You know, so it's just like. I think in general, and that's a sneaker that like I wouldn't mind selling. That you know, granted, I already sold a pair, but um, you it goes for six hundred more. Worn, you worn that right? Uh, I wore I wore it once, yeah. And it current mm-hmm. like it currently. I'm not gonna say it goes for more. Worn, granted, I create content around shit, so like content is how I make money as well. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. a double edged yeah. sword. I would wear these. I don't really plan on getting rid of those because I already made. I already sold a pair, so I got a pair for retail and I bought a pair of resale. I okay. sold the pair that I got for retail for the same price that I got those for and paid retail. So it's like, for me, I look at it like I got those for free. Gotcha. And being that I do like sneakers, like I'm not just literally flipping every single thing. There are yeah. sneakers that I'm just like, man, I want this. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to it, you know? So okay. I think it's kind of like, it's both, you know, for sure. If I look at it like this, if I wouldn't have gotten two pairs, I probably would have sold it. Cause I would have been like, I can't justify keeping this sneaker right now. Like, mm you know, just because of my situation and my family situation. Right. But with something like that, it's like, okay, I got my money back. For, I basically got it for free is the way I look at it, you know? I can dig it. Yo, I got to bounce, man. I had, I had fun on this. Hey, man, it was right. fun having you. All right, bro. All right, in the future as well. Ooh, Jacob, man. Thank you, man. Yo, some of you guys yeah. up out. Hey, yo. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, 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 my my thing is I think that we're at a point now that we have putting a value on these items that I don't see it dissipating anytime soon. You know what I'm Hell saying? Nah. So hold on, I think uh MBS wanted to come in too early. What's going on, bro? What's that? What's good, bro. I think in terms of market, chilling, chilling. I think it'll fluctuate. Like I mean we all most of us, I'm assuming like most of us were around when the S B market crashed and then skyrocketed, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. I was and picking so, some of them up. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I mean, it's crazy to me to think that like Stussy cherries were at a, at one point going for two, three hundred dollars, and That's I was looking, at, I was looking at them on eBay, thinking like, nah, I'm not gonna pay three hundred for this pair, and now mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck, I wish I would have bought every single pair of Stussy cherries that ever popped up on eBay, just off the fact that like, what the fuck, like I could, if I would have, you know, it's just like anything, like I could literally feed my fucking mom for two years off Stussy cherries if I would have just bought every single pair. You know, so Spec, did you have anything particularly you want you wanted to talk or a question? Uh, I had a, a little two cents I wanted to put in. Uh, I saw I, you. Yeah, go ahead. I think you only pay resale for like shoes that you really can't even find no more. Like some shoes that I wanted like way back then or something. Like this shit's really just getting out of hand. Yeah, it is. I can agree with that. I think that like. I think we convince ourselves, and that's kind of gets back to my main point, which is why I wanted to have MK and Troll on here, or why I wanted to hop in the previous one. I feel bad that we're kind of getting off topic at times, even though I do feel like the topics are somewhat intermixed, is the whole idea or concept of needing these sneakers. Like, 
and buying sneakers that in my opinion like have no real representation to have no like not representation but like no uh Ties no significance within your within your history or your life yeah. you know you might buy a travis scott sneaker and like don't get me wrong i think travis scott is a cool artist i like some of his music but i will never listen to travis scott and it won't kind it won't have the same effect on me as li listening to like looking in my eyes from bone thugs and harmony you know that's just like one re one resonates with a certain era of my life one is just new cool music and so like for me i think that we place value in a lot of things you know and i'm saying this as a reseller as someone who makes his living off these items having value i think we place too much value into things that have no significance for us personally or we Definitely. don't really fuck with we just think oh it's travis scott sneaker travis scott like you know mk i saw your video about the fragment one you know oh my god there's a fragment branding here travis scott branding here boom let's get it and that sneaker well, I, I got a question i got a question on that right and mk yeah. mk because you're kind of you know I, and i feel i feel you like I feel the, the I, like I said, I still feel the whole aspect of, um, fuck, you know, the resale that's just insane and all that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, right? How would you look at it? Would or even Jacob, you're someone who actually does it. Would you like? Okay, MK, your mm -hmm. your your channel's growing. People want to mm -hmm. fuck with you more now. But mm -hmm. there's some people that want to fuck with you because they fuck with you. But there's also people that want to fuck with you because they see some sort of way to get in on an opportunity because you're popping. Right. You feel me? Right, so right. at the same time, should a should we fault a reseller for taking advantage of a situation where a person is really not even caring for that actual brand that's just caring for the hype? And like, should, should that even be like, should, you know, we're saying fuck the resellers, but they're, if they're selling to someone who's not only is thought is to get the shoe because it's hype instead of actually loving the shoe, mm -hmm. should we should we look at it differently or all the same? Like what I'm trying uh, to say, like what I'm trying to say is, for instance, Kobe six, Kobe six Grinch. I told you how I felt about that, right, and right. I wasn't able to hit it because because resellers ate it up. That's fucked up. Whatever. I bought my money, I spent it. But if you got some kid that just want to buy the shoe because everybody's telling them how much it's going for and the hype, should we treat that? Should we treat? Should we look at it like from this or reseller as a whole, or do you see that fuck that side as well, like where the resellers can, like Jacob, do you feel do you care about people that at all depend on who you're selling to? So I would say there are limitations, but every man has their own ethics, right? And, and I wrote down a comment. So like, knowing the type of person that I was, if sneakers were as much of a thing when I was 15, I was a, I was a piece of shit, right? So I would have for sure, if I would have came across MK's videos, I would 1000% be like, okay, let me do my research. I'm about to start selling fake shoes to people, telling them they're real. Just because I know what type of person I was, you know, but I... Mm -hmm not getting too specific told you guys some of the other shit that i did so i know that you know but i i don't hold anyone accountable for that i don't hold like i would never say like oh mk is responsible for every nah, single person that views this i got i got easy i got an easier way because I, I feel like that was very com confusing what i said let me just ask it this way <laughs> a motherfucker who been buying dunks forever and now can't get them because the motherfuckers are reselling them i feel bad for that person yeah I, but should but i feel with, bad I, for the little kid that now all of a sudden likes dunks Cause every, cause all, cause nah. he, that's what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? Nah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was, I was mostly going down the line of, I think every sneakerhead or every person that has their own MK, ethics. Like for example, when it comes to reselling Kobe, I think if you put on is retail, then wrong. sell retail to replace with uh -oh, UH. Hold on. Copper. You a all the okay. Way hold on. Cap. Copper. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Copper was asking that he donated this earlier. MK. This one's directed towards you. Um, oh. uh, Copper King says MK the truth. How can you be retail first? If you hit on retail, then sell retail. To replace with UA, it should be UA all the way, no cap. No, because it, I've already explained this in the video. Like, if I get yeah. a UA, if I have a retail, like my uh, Grateful Dead Yellow Bear, I hit on those, then I got a UA. And my UA was the same as my, my retail shoe. So me, I only want the design. I don't care about I don't care about retail or the UA. Both of them came the same. So I got rid of the retail to somebody who wanted to buy it. I'm always retail first, but if I get a if I get a retail and then I get a UA and that UA ain't adding up in some way, shape, or form, I'm gonna keep my fucking retail. There you go, Copper. If you want to talk, I you feel can that, I don't, for me, like I don't like I said, I don't really care either way. Like in terms of, I understand the idea, the concept of reselling the retail pair and keeping the UA pair. Um, you know, I think every man has their own. You said you don't people. understand the concept. No, I do understand the concept. Oh, okay, That's what okay, I said. okay. I understand, especially if I understand the concept of just 
getting a sneaker and thinking like, damn, this is worth a lot of money. Like, cause like I said, the way I view anything in life, right? Mm. No matter what anyone tells me, there's old, there's old like notes that I have where like <coughs> my main focus is re is essentially providing for my family, right? Right, so right, right. I got you. I can't knock a man for doing that, right? I would never, I would never judge you for getting a pair, pair of retail, getting a UA pair, and being like, these are the same thing. I'm just gonna rock the UAs, and I would never be like, oh man, he's broke because he's wearing UAs. Like that's <laughs> weird to me, right? Yeah. But um. I think I think from that from that storyline from that from that that specific moment which I had mentioned earlier, MK didn't care enough about that shoe enough to need the UA. I mean, they need the authentic. The money was more important than yeah, the shoe. I agree. Now, if it's a shoe mm, that nah, the shoe that, now nah. I'm, I'm just, well, let me just finish. If it was a shoe MK that you've been wanting for years mm. and you actually got it, would you still do that, or would you want to keep the authentic? Even you if, mean, it's if I had a, re a UA and the so, retail. So, for instance, MK, I like I said again, I love the Kobe Six Grinches. Say you right. love them like I did, and you hit, right. you hit, you had UA, and then right. you hit retail, but they look the same. Would you still, would you sell the the, the retail, or would you definitely. keep? Definitely. Okay, my, so, definitely. Even, so even I don't if you're expect that, to order the shoe, bro. Okay. But I think my question, my okay, question. Okay, that's fine. That's this is where we, I'm different on that, but go ahead. This is this is where I have a question in terms of, you know, and and someone brought it up in here, Ben Dover brought it up, but. When you sold the shoes, did you sell them for market price in terms of what they, I mean, did you sell the, the great, and mind you, this is coming from a reseller, so I'm not saying mm -hmm. <laughs> that I would judge you necessarily, but I nah, just wonder cool. whether or not you sold them at market price or you sold them for retail to someone. Nah, I sold Re them, I took them shits down to uh, Cool Kicks. So do you not, do you feel like that, because I, I often hear you talk about resellers, do you feel like that is not, or would you more specifically kind of speak down against resellers that specifically like bought and get a hundred pairs? Yeah, I don't fuck with that. So that's kind of where you're disagreeing with resellers. Yeah, like, that's, not that's necessarily my... like a disagreement with resellers, but nah, a disagreement with I've resellers already... who make it next to impossible to cop the sneaker yourself. Right, exactly. I, I explained this okay. in the video. Like I don't have a problem with somebody who get a couple of pairs and resell it here and there, but I have my, my, my main problem is people buying hundreds of pairs like the Ann Hebert shit and hoarding mm -hmm. and storing shit and then teasing us about the shit. That's my main problem. I want them motherfuckers gone. That's he the type of person I want gone. What's like, that? He wasn't a real sneakerhead. For my, they like wore fly nits and stuff. Yeah. Like, no no real J's or nothing. Like <laughs> that nigga wore some fly nits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's my whole problem with the whole resale game. Is it's motherfuckers that do that shit, man. I'm tired of seeing that shit, man. I mean, like I said, I respect everybody hustle, but I've been here before that shit. Like before resale, you mean? No, not resale as a whole. No, I mean true. this whole hoarding shit. Like this, this. Before people were copping hundreds and hundreds. Of yeah, the, the pictures yeah, of the bottom of shit. The bottom of shit was like Granted, back then. It was more based off like what kind of connection you had or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, but, okay, do you like the pictures back in the day where the niggas walking with like maybe like ten of them and it up like? 10, 11, Jordan 11 Concords like that. I ain't never homies. seen that shit <laughs> I'm, well, <laughs> back yeah. in the day. Well, I'm, oh, talking about, no, I'm talking about like shit. There's pictures with Zaya when they was out camping in line and they hit on like 10 pairs of Concords and shit. Like personally, like being in line at the store. You like that? You like that compared nah, to- Nah, that's, that's, see like that. that you were something that. like that. I mean, I don't, I don't really like that per se, but my whole thing is that shit with the like, you got a motherfucking warehouse full of nah, shit, Nah, that's man. different. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. the new shit. The old shit though is like, the four five homies that went in line, they walking out with like five boxes each. And the same. I mean, you guys, that, but, and that, you guys brought that up last time too. And I remember there was a comparison where you guys said that's not the same. But to me, that is the same because I forget who it was. It's the dude that has uh, he he was the botter, but he basically said, "Oh well, you know. no, because then people still have a have a chance." But if you've ever really lined up, when you're with a group of people, the people you don't stand a chance. The, you come up with a group of people, nine times out of ten you're gonna outnumber the other people. So you walk to the front with your group and you just say, what are you gonna do about it? You're by yourself. I'm with 10 people. That's what happens in a lot of those lines. And if, if you've ever lined up for sneakers, you've probably experienced that, whether you've been on the end of that where you're walking up with your people or whether you're the one person by yourself where you have to you know, confront 10 other people. Usually that's what happens in any of those lines. If you go to LA, New York, that's what happens nine times out of 10 is people will come up with a whole group of people that walk up to the front. No, bro, I've been here. I've been here, bro, I've been here. And that's what I've lined up for sneakers and Supreme so many times. I've mm. seen that happen. I've been on both ends of it where it's like, you know. You talking about back in the day? Back in the day and now, currently, well, see, not now, but 
But see, it's a, it's a, it was a little bit different back in the day. See, see like what uh, Tony said, somebody would get like 10 pair, right? You walk out of line with the shit. It was a little bit different because we didn't have like the stock X, the goat to get that shit off as fast as they can now. Yeah. So it was like the prices wasn't as fucking ridiculous as it is on resale now. Like now we got stock X, goat. They got shit to unload off on now, opposed to back Hold in the on, day. Hold on, conference they, coming they, back they, for you, MK. Huh? Coffers coming so back. if it's the same thing both pair of real twins with different mamas was are being sold as authentic by authentic sources. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> he said, uh oh. So if it's the same thing, both pair are real twins with different mamas, UAs are being sold as authentic by authentic sources. I don't know what the hell that, wait, that what shit, the fuck? That fucked mama head up a little bit, Copper. I ain't gonna cap. Uh oh. <laughs> so if it's the same thing. Both pair are real twins with they different look, mamas. <laughs> UAs are being sold as authentic by authentic sources. Speak Yo, Copper, English, man. Come, Copper, come pull up, bro. Speak I would love English, to hear man. what you're trying to say. That shit threw me off, though, about the mamas <laughs> and the twins, bro. Holy it, shit. It, but now, nah, MK, it, so was, MK, man. what you just said, does the easiness out of it play a part to you? You feel like the hustle was harder? You respect the hustle... That was it, was. it was a lot more of a hustle back then than now. Now you just drop it on StockX, you go. Does that have any part or no? What, StockX and GOAT? I guess you said your problem, like, back in the day, motherfuckers had to, like, go find people to sell to. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. It, it was harder back then. Now, it's, yeah. you know, we got you got so many outlets now. It's, yeah. Anybody and, can be a fucking and, and, seller, and, and, let, and let me clarify something again, because to people in the playback, um, MK, we already had, me and you had talked about this before. Jacob watched that live, and he kind of wanted to get on and talk to you and troll about it. And he was cool, cool. randomly available now, so that's why he might be asking some of the same questions we already went over oh, and talked cool, about. Man. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But go ahead. I'm gonna let y'all talk it out. Um I don't I would say I would argue that point where I think it's easier now. Like I think it just depends. Like now it's like the power's just shifted. Cause I can say I've looked into botting. I've never bought it, right? Mm -hmm. That shit confuses me. Like it just does. Like I I read when I when I read about it. Yeah. It's like I'm reading Spanish. Like, I just don't understand. There's a learning curve on it. And, you know, it's just like the same thing. Like, I've asked Tony, and he'll never want to give me a secret to how he gets his Twitch stream <laughs> so clear. But, like, when I read about Twitch streaming, you know, and maybe that's just because of age where I'm like, okay, you know, now, like, like I'm probably older than most people in this chat think I am. But when I see things, I'm like, okay, like, it's harder for me to adjust and learn. And I'm, I'm always open to learning and adapting, right? But for mm -hmm. me, I don't see it as something that's like super easy where it's like, oh, this thing where like, it's just people just get online and just cop hella sneakers, you know? And maybe that's just because I don't understand it, but I do think that it's just a different era. It's just a different hustle at the end of the Definitely. day. Now people are hustling from their computer, from the comfort of their computer chair, as opposed oh, yeah. to, you know, actually putting miles on their shoes or footwork, you know? Right. But... I don't know. That's my biggest difference. There was a couple other points that I actually I wrote down a lot of points um, that you guys talked about. Feel free but, to go just to talk. I mean, you got them here. You know, if you want to talk uh, to them about it. Yeah. So uh, hit that like button, man. Six hundred and thirty-nine in the building. Hit that motherfucking <laughs> like button. Hold on, my bad. You know, um, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Um. So. uh Marcus Jordan most, is in the chat. Most of it was most of it was I will say like in agreement. There were a couple of things that I disagreed with, like uh, in terms of value, like saying that sneakers not worth a particular amount. Like value is not predicated on just technology. So it's like True. so like when you guys argued the whole value in terms of like this is all old tech, right? Like I understand that, but coming from someone who wore SBs, who got into SBs because of the actual. Uh, production of those sneakers. I mean, before SBs, I was wearing Vans Dr. T's or fucking DVS skate shoes, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like when SBs became a thing and I started getting into SBs, it was because the shoe actually was a good shoe for, you know, whether I was going to go ride my bike with no brakes or whatever and I was modeling right. a little BMX bike, my little 20-inch, right? So I think that, like, it's it's value is all solely dependent on just supply and demand. So that's where I think that was one of the points that I wrote down. That's um, that's some true to that, yeah. Yeah, and then like, uh, it doesn't seem like this is an issue because like when I hear you and Troll talk about resellers, obviously a part of me I'm like I resell. Granted, I'm not 
that's why I wanted to ask for clarification before about whether your problem is with resellers who bought, you know, mm-hmm. and mind you, I would say for me, I don't have a problem with any of it. I, there is a part of me that sees it as like, okay, it makes the game less fair. That's the one thing I will say where it's like the current game is not as fair as it was before. You could go wait in line right. by yourself. And yeah, you might not have the same odds of copying if you went there with 10 of your people, you know, but you're more than likely going to be able to get a pair if you put the time in and you can start exactly. somewhere as opposed to now the learning curves. If you don't have thousands of dollars to go spend on a computer and then thousands of dollars to go spend on a bot, if you don't have like original capital, it's harder to get started, you know? Right. So that's where I would say I definitely agree. Like it makes it hard for it to be a true, like, uh, like a true hustle where you're really starting with almost nothing, you know? And I see people reselling. I see people say, Oh, I did this on my own. I started reselling. And I'm like, your dad is rich as fuck. Like, I know you got those sneakers because your dad went and, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of one of the bigger things. But everyone keeps saying my shoe shelf is way up there almost by the ceiling. <laughs> that's my... Yeah, what the fuck is that, yeah? yeah that's that's my, just, uh, look, that's, man, look, man, let me explain. This is my bedroom right there. And so I, I reach the shoes by reaching over the little banister, okay? That's why my sneakers are... Yo, what the fuck, yeah? <laughs> I just thought it would look cool, you know? Like, you walk in... Yeah, like, that's interesting as shit. Like, how do you get the shoes there. off of there? How do you get that yeah. bottom one, though? Oh, you just reach down, you know? Oh. Uh, you want me to give you a little... I'll give you a little demonstration. I don't want know? that shit to fall down, bro. That shit gonna hurt my feeling. <laughs> you just reach over, grab them, you know? So, so, um... I had asked you earlier about the, I guess the UA or the fake clothing market. Is it is it at the point now though for that with Supreme and stuff where you can see it or you need to feel it now, or you both? I mean, feel it. You can def. I can definitely see you can feel. Can you see it though? A fake with cl- with clothes. Yeah. Can you see it still? Nine times, nine times out of ten, you can see it. Um, like there are definitely close fakes. I mean, there's fakes that get through every authentication. A website out there right stock x whatever um but nine times out of ten like yeah you're gonna have to feel it and you're gonna have there's so many different things to look for when it comes to clothing that i feel like it's a lot it's a lot harder and so, like i said before, that's that's, so that's, that's interesting as shit man like let me ask you a question so you you do supreme right yeah but you do like supreme, box yeah. logo t-shirts and shit uh yeah i do box logos box logos like there's a lot of things that people that resell people don't pay attention to when people think supreme they think just box logos, but like, uh, no, this, I wanted to ask you, like, what, what is the difference between a box logo Supreme shirt and a regular t shirt? The box uh, logo is just the, the, the Supreme across the chest. The same thing, the same thing between the, the shoe with a Nike swoosh and without a Nike swoosh, you know? That's no, I mean, like, the overall, like, is what, what is it made with like a special cotton, a special thread? Like, what's the difference uh, from a regular t shirt? I would say there are benefits, like, so, like, I'm not trying to be funny or nothing. I'm, you I'm mean, trying you to, mean, so you mean a Supreme tee against any tee or a Supreme, yeah, a like, Supreme box what, logo what are they doing differently tea? on a Supreme box logo tee that they're not doing on a, a regular t shirt? When you say regular I mean, T-shirt, you mean that's regular all branding? Are you it's talking all about branding? That's just uh, like you could so, argue that it's, it's made in, in made in the U.S., which is mm-hmm. a, is uh, is not as common for most streetwear brands now. You know. Okay, so it's essentially it's the same as a regular T-shirt. Yeah, I would say I don't really have that many. Like, there's not many Supreme. I don't even really wear that many Supreme tees to be honest. I wear a lot of Supreme jackets, but not tees. Like, I don't really like the way their tees feel as much. Okay, I'm trying to see this. This is the thing where I'm trying to go with the like the overall value with this shit. Because remember, like, uh, what was it, two or three years ago when Supreme took all of those uh, T-shirts and they just gave the rest to Kmart? Well, they didn't give it to Kmart, but yeah, I know what you're saying American Apparel. The basically the American Apparel actually faced a lot of backlash from Supreme for that. But American Apparel, when they were going out of business, uh, mm-hmm. all their stuff gets liquidated, just like any business, right? So then, right, right. Uh, some of their since they were manufacturing for supreme uh some of their some of the tees that supreme blanks they still had in stock which were mm-hmm. not supposed to be released according to the uh contract between supreme and american apparel were still liquidated to uh kmart which that was like a big issue that wasn't even supposed to happen but you know there's always you know, you know it's funny though so like so this is a funny thing mk there was a little time on my channel where i was dipping and dabbing into supreme and i mm-hmm. uh, bought some i bought a i think it was like 200 or maybe 300 dollars sweater and I, hit, yeah. and I hit up Jacob about it. And I'm just curious to know now, Jacob, how much the thing's probably going worth. The Ob- what was it? The, what, what, the, what, Obama, what, what, the Obama anorak. 
Those ones actually don't go for that much. For real? Know? Still? Yeah, which is crazy. It just, that the market is, is completely like dependent. It. Like, a lot of the loud pieces, the, it's funny because a lot of the pieces that people, that most of the people in this chat will see as like, that's hype beast. That's going to resell. Aren't the pieces that resell? And that's what I went and grabbed. This piece right here has like no Supreme branding on it, really, except for this little Supreme tag. And this sells for three times what retail was. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. See, I'm looking it, at it right now. It's just a now. flannel. It's just a flannel. It's selling. You can look right. at StockX right now. So it's for 450 bucks. Get and the it, fuck and out retail of was 150 dollars. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Now this is the one I got right here. I'm gonna show the chat. This bitch is hard still to this day. I, I love it. I just I love got it. The pants. It's right here, man. I got that <laughs> shit. That shit hard. I can't even see it. You'll joint. see it. You'll see it on the stream. It's just a. Uh, uh, actually, I can probably share it with you real quick. Is this one though? Hold on. Right there, that. Oh, that's uh, dope. It's Obama on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's actually a. They copied that design. I forget the original artist, but yeah. That's just uh, slick, man. I ain't even gonna lie. I don't really fuck with shit like that, but that's yeah, slick I just right fucked there. with it, man. It was hard. That's my. That's one of my favorite colors right there, and. I can't yeah, remember how much. That. That's going. That's going to do some uh, damage later. You yeah. might want to keep that. Yeah. The hard. thing is also the, the other crazy thing though, MK, is that people don't usually know that like even with me, I learned later on Supreme's been around since like ninety five. Yeah. Ninety four. So it's like a, oh, it's not yeah, even like that. a new brand to a lot of people yeah. think it's like new, but it's been around for a long time. It just started it like it goes through it through its phases, you know, like you know yeah. with with I guess with like African American wise the community, it would dipset played a huge part in um in uh Tyler the, how the creator played a huge part, right? Would you say, Jacob, who brought it to, to hip-hop, I would say? Well, so, yeah, I mean, I would say, obviously, like, uh, I don't know if you saw that Jim Jones uh, video where he talks about it, um, but I think they had an impact. Tyler, the creator, is probably the biggest reasons why. I wouldn't say um, the hip-hop community. I would say, like, why golf fans wear it. Like, the reason, like, hipsters like Supreme is because of Tyler, the creator. Like all the people that wear like high water pants and like cardigans, which I'm not knocking. I mean, I like cardigans too, but I'm just saying like those, like all those types of people got into it because of Tyler, basically. Tyler's like a big, I mean, but those guys have like, and Supreme knows that because like uh, Supreme's kind of lost some of its appeal. Like I remember hearing stories when I first started lining up in LA because I used to, I would go to LA, I'd fly out there and I would literally line up. God damn. Yeah. And I'm from Washington, but I mean, for example, like the first time I ever lined up for Supreme, I waited outside for seven days, literally like Jesus. outside the whole time. And people thought it was so weird. But I mean, I made four thousand dollars that week, you know, so it's like it was a good it was that's a good ass week, you know. Um, God, Reiner, Reiner, that, Reiner, Reiner. Supreme is a we understand the Supreme like is a skate brand and all that. I'm talking about as far as this like hip hop, the hip hop side, like black people fucking with it and it getting it getting into this you know where it's at but like yeah it's been rocked since way back then by skaters but yeah. i'm just trying to say like jim jones and Dipset and tyler that kind of brought it like i think i think i asked bull one time who was the person that kind of brought supreme to your head and he said that it was tyler for him like tyler was yeah. his his representation tyler's of a it big, tyler's definitely a big part of like why i ain't even i've never even seen tyler in no supreme like that Oh, he was big. He's big in the Supreme. But he's also, but he's, but he's a skater though, you know? And oh yeah, he is. That's like, right. For me coming up, Supreme was never a big deal because I used to kick it with skaters, but all the people I kicked it with that were skaters thought Supreme was weird. Like they thought, like they thought people who were buying Supreme, you know, you're buying these clothes, they're just going to skate it. Most people, I remember there's only one dude at the skate park that I used to go to uh, that would wear Supreme. His name was Tahiti. And all he had was a Supreme hat. He was the only one. Other than that, it was like Vans Authentics you know or some other skate shoe and he would just sit there and skate all day it wasn't like a big thing where like skaters were trying to get super fresh or whatever but supreme um, don't even like the reseller that shit do they they claim they don't but they do they're just like nike come on they they <laughs> all, everybody they does all like man. It. yeah they're, they just say that like all the brands just say that man like yeah you make a brand and your brand resells and your brand sells out and you're making you know, yeah, that's gonna make if, it if Nike good. had the audacity to make a shoe called "Not for Resale," like, come on, like, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, they all love it. Like, that's just like they that's play just, into that shit, bro. Like, they, and they, they, made them they say limited. that because they have to. Like, they yeah. have to say that to appease their base. But I think that they they love it, and they can say all they want. Like, oh, we don't fuck with resellers, yada yada yada. They can have this, but a lot of that's forced. Like, I've even heard stories of like employees at Supreme, basically, like when you get hired, like they're basically like trained to be dickheads. Just to kind of have that, like, oh, you have to fuck with us, like that snobby appeal. Wow. Um, 
but yeah, whenever yeah, I whenever I went into Snip Supreme, I always I always have a weird aura feeling around me. Like whenever I went, even when I was in London, it was just always weird, bro. Like it always felt like you're not wanted or they want you in and out. It's just you know, and, <laughs> and, and another brand like that too. I like the brand. Unfortunately, I like their brand, but I don't buy into them. But Palace is like that too. Like when I went to we were in London, I think, and went to Palace or somewhere, and it was just like. Like, like like Jacob said, the people were kind of like dickheads. They don't. It's just, yeah, Palace is like a baby supreme. They yeah. basically just they're UK you know, supreme, right? Pretty much. Like, isn't it a UK brand or no? Yeah, but they came up with a lot of the same people. Like the way that Palace came to be, I like I like Palace in terms of what they do for skate culture because they'll open up like they opened up a whole like uh uh like basically like a skate park for free for all the skaters in London that people could go to and like I thought that shit like that's dope. Um, I don't know if that's still open, but it was for a while. Uh, that being said, they basically just, every time you see Supreme do something, I don't know if it's just happenstance, but it seems like you see Palace do it like a couple weeks later, you mm. know? And I know that they normally plan out ahead of time, so I doubt it, but it just feels like they go down the same path a lot of the time. Mm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of dope brands that like, if you're into streetwear, that you don't need to go cop. Like one brand that I like a lot is FTP. I think FTP is cool. And yeah, there's a lot of hype, but there's people that like, ftp has got like a cool community for the most part. There's still people who think it's like Suicide Boys merch and shit like that, but like they're actually dope. And like if you ever meet Zach, he actually you gotta, gives a fuck. You got these escape brands. Yeah, you got a fan in the what, chat, Fruit Boot Davy. Uh, yes, what, what are you saying? You did. I don't know. Who you Those escape brands. Uh, FTP is an escape brand. It's a streetwear brand, but oh, okay. It's a um. I don't know nothing about none of that shit. Me either. It's a cool, it's a cool brand. It's just like they collaborate. Well, a little, I'm a little bit biased, but they collaborate with Colt, which is a BMX company. Um, is that so the I think fuck that's the police cool or something? With an act. What? Fuck the police or something? What is it? It stands for fuck the population. A population. Okay, I, I've heard that brand. Oh damn! Before. <laughs> I've heard yeah. that brand before. I've heard of them. Yeah, they're. I think they're <laughs> super dope, and like the community behind them is super dope. If you ever go, like, there's people online that are still kind of like have this like mentality like uh this kind of snobbish like oh i've been on it blah 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 but most for the most part when you go to a ftp line like everyone's super chill everyone just wants to kick it and smoke and like wait in line as opposed to like supreme where it's like everyone is just simply there to resell it every single i mean we had we had we had yeah like bro like shit jacob was it us was you with me that time when have me and you ever been in, in london together we were in London together, but okay. uh, not when you went to Palace. We were in London. It was me, you, Kais. Well, you remember how it was with Supreme there, though? Like, there's a guy that y'all met up with and get the, the... You get... Like, it's like... Supreme is organized, bro. It's a motherfucker that pulls up in a car, and he has a Supreme in his back trunk. He got something... Proxies for you or whatever. Like, it's always yeah, some weird well, shit. Well, London does, London does it even worse, though, because London... London's more apparent about their back door is their front door. Like they have a friends and family line. So they have their own line and then they have a friends and family line. But there are people that are part of that friends and family line that have just been longtime shoppers. So that I kind of fuck with as opposed to like in LA and New York, by what I've heard, the friends and family line for the most part, maybe not in New York, cause that's like obviously the birthplace, but like in LA for sure, a lot of the people that are part of that friends and family list are just people who are paying more money essentially and copying because they're paying a premium so they can get it first and resell so it's it first. Kieran, man. So it's a Kieran, man. Yeah, Kieran, you got them spamming that bitch a little too much, buddy. Gotta got them get some of these things up out of here, man. Yeah, damn, buddy. I see you. I see you. But like going back to your original statement in terms of does brand loyalty exist? I think that there are brands. I think that don't get me wrong. Like when it comes to like, I have no brand loyalty for Nike. Like well, there might be a specific sneaker I'll cop, but like, if I feel like uh, if I feel like blazers at some point get impossible to cop because Travis Scott decides you to said wear blazers, earlier that the average uh -oh. sneakerhead spends like two thousand dollars or more a year. Why not own shares with all that money, so it's the which Mopar. is worth more? Man, you said, shrugging. You said earlier that the average sneakerhead spends about two thousand dollars or more a year. Why not own shares with all that money, which is you worth more? You do not more? need one thousands of dollar to start botting. There are platforms where you can rent a bot for a day slash week slash Definitely month true. for the low. Just to inform you fellas. So Casey with that um, 499, but, you don't need a bot for but, $1,000. I, I got Casey a bot. Boasts, but Casey, but bot rentals go up. I'm partnered with the bot rental company in my in my cook group. I know what they charge and they go up. Like, yeah, you can definitely rent a bot for a, a cheap price. But 
one, you're more than likely not going to hit on your first time because most people who bought successfully are running 40 to 60 cards. And then also bot rentals go up depending on the release. So if you're trying to get a bot rental for a box logo or for example, for the, um, for the dunks, I had to rent out a bot for one of my providers. And like I said, I'm not going to advertise my cook group in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you said the bot rental goes up on specific releases? Yeah, yeah. so if you want to pay for a bot rental for a specific release, fuck out for example, Nike, the Nike SB Dunks that release, right? I got two right. pairs. I got a pair manually, and then one of my ACO providers ran, ran my information and got me another pair. So I got two pairs, right? Uh, I like that shoe. Obviously, I like the Dunk High that released in that same one. I think it's kind of weird they're releasing that same style on a Jordan 1 What's as well. What's the big well. You talking about the joint with the stars on it? Hey Jacob, yeah. Jacob, as far as as, as far as uh your cook group, um, what, what I'll let you do is also uh, is, you can you can definitely share your Discord in here, and then they can find out about that if they are interested in your other things. Believe it or not, I have two bots and I have two really good bots. I don't even use. I spent the money. I never used them. I have a lifetime and one really good bot, and I have another one that I got for like a discount. I have uh, TSB. Kino actually showed it. It's called the Shit Bot. It's a Nike sneaker spot. And that I was also, a little out of everybody. I've heard it's good. And I also have the Eve Bot. Um, Eve, Rob it's Eve, <laughs> Eve, or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't even, I don't even, I, I, I haven't taken the time to even get into it because it's so fucking complicated, and it's not worth the time, right? In, in all honesty, bro. But I do have, and the Eve Bot, that shit goes for money. You can resell them. They got value. They go up and down. You can rent them out to people. I could be renting that bitch out to people right now, making money. That's crazy as hell. Yeah, you can definitely rent them and make money. And the thing is, like I was saying, they go up. You know, for for me, like I don't, like I said, I don't personally bought yet. I wouldn't mind doing it. It's just something I haven't, I don't understand. But like, I had to pay for one of my providers to get uh, to get some, so that way I could provide some free slots for my members. And I think that week, I got like a decent price, and it was 130 just to use it for that week. You know, so it's like the the homie was saying, like, oh, you don't need a thousand dollars. Like, yeah, if you want to go bought like a pretty generic release then yeah you probably don't need that much money but you're gonna be paying for proxies you're gonna be paying for rentals each week like hey. you're gonna add up to a thousand dollars real quick and, and and mopar said that we could spend that money in shares i'm gonna tell you one thing right now mopar right now you don't want nothing to do with the stock market my guy that shit is fucked up trust me bro yes I sir done, i done lost like two grand in the I'm stock in market for the past like <laughs> month it's been horrible it's Hell been yeah. i mean I, I made i made like three thousand and then i lost like all that shit bro i lost like everything I've made, I've made it's just gambling man. gambling that yeah. is fine the best thing right now it is for sure like it is for sure kind of like gambling but man yeah. i'm telling y'all like i bought a bunch of uh like delta and alaska stock at the start that's of COVID good and, yeah that's I mean, where my money's all but that's where all my that's all where all my green is at is from delta I'll yeah, I've, I'll I've more, more than doubled my money. I tell you, and I'm not, you know, I don't want to advertise me because it ties it because eventually it will bust and it'll drop. But I'm in, the, I'm in it for the long run. But in all honesty, mark, mark, the stock market's been going down, but the crypto has been going up and up and up. But it will, it will pop. It's gonna, something's gonna happen again, just like it did back in 2018 or something. But I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm in it in the long run. I'm not here for that little shit. Indeed. So you know. Uh, chat. I don't know if any of y'all want to come hop in here, man. We've been we've been live for two hours and thirty seven minutes. I got a video dropping at nine. You can take the link if y'all want to hop in and, and add into the conversation. <laughs> they keep saying let MBS speak. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm oh, just chilling. MBS but... is rolling up a blunt right now, man. <laughs> so he's, he's smoking and gathering his thoughts. So when he go when he's time to talk, he can go. For real. If you have anything to say, feel free. Yeah, go ahead. I do got something I want to show y'all because I'm actually spectacle to shit. Chad, what's good, bro? Just I got a video drop. Hold on. Whoa. I don't know on, how wide the UA market is, what shoes people want for UA if they releasing every shoe UA or anything because I got a pair of Air Maxes, them NYC ones, and I think is messed up like the stitching on the tag is way lower than one of the other parts i'll show it to you that happens no that's that's that happens okay jacob done dipped on this jacob you out you out or what did he say something he wouldn't leave just like that though yeah, phone call so wait oh so so you got a ua and you said it was fucked up i, I don't know i don't buy you oh, buy all oh you said you got a regular pair and was fucked up like in but i think it's ua 
Okay, okay. You got them all, somebody? No, I got them from the store. Oh, you got them from the store? Yeah. Nah, what people okay. need to realize, man, is like this shit with retail too, it'd be fucked up too. It's 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 normal, man. I mean, that's that shit is normal. You just paying attention now, man. That's what I be trying to get people to understand. Like, that's just what I've been doing for over the past what 20 years. Like, I be taking shit back to the stores. Like, I get a Jordan one, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my shits would be higher than the other. Or well, my toe box would just be cut totally different than my right shoe. And I take that motherfucker right back to the store for those reasons because I never liked that shit. And that's what I try to tell people, like, it's normal, man. Like, the flaws, the fuck-ups, everything, is it's all normal. Like, it's nothing wrong with the shit. Like, so when you see some shit like that, that looks suspect, I mean, it's normal. Like, you, you got millions of people making this shit. Like, yeah. everything is not going to be 100% exact to the last shoe that you saw. See, a lot of people cross-reference with, like, one shoe that one picture on StockX or some shit. Mm -hmm. and, and granted, there are shit that should line up in certain areas for the most part. Mm -hmm. But not everything is going to be 100%, you know, half an inch from this and that. It's not going to be like that. And believe it that, or not, that, and believe it or not, these shoes are still being made by people. Exactly. They're not made by machines. Some things are made by machines, but not every single thing. Right. So that's another thing. Like, and I, we, me and MK talked about it earlier too. Like when they, when they doing these shoes, they're rolling out leather in long rolls, yard. Right. They call them yards. They, and different yards have different things. One might be more tumbled. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, not being funny, but like, leather's from a cow. Like, one cow's skin might have dried. The exactly. leather might have been dried longer or different. Or the, that cow was not as healthy. Weird shit like that. But it plays part into how the textures are and everything. It's not like it's all made right. from one cow. Like, you got hundreds of thousands of pairs, hundreds of thousands of different rolls. You know, mm -hmm. um, that role, one role might roll, they might run out of actual material on that one role and they need to find something very similar that's mm -hmm. not noticeable to us, but it's a different, coming from a different company, you know, but it's identical almost. So like, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I will say, uh, there was another point I forgot to bring up uh, that I see at MK, you make this, you make this, you made this point several times in your videos and it's one that I wanted to address. Mm -hmm. We always say like, if it's, if I think, Please correct it if I if I start responding to it and it's misquoted at all. But essentially what you say is like, if it's fake, then why are they using all these real leathers? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So um, my my one point to that would be because people are buying it. You right. Know, because you're buying it because everyone's buying it, which obviously you know. But I've always wondered like why, I guess like if you could dive deeper on that because it's like, obviously the reason they use real leathers is because they want to get it as close to the original thing as they can. But see, my whole my whole thing with the the you know with them using real leathers, like, I mean, I know there's there's a lot of cows, there's a lot of leather, but that mm -hmm. shit ain't really that abundant. Like, why? Like, my whole thing is like, if you're making fake shit, like, why are you wasting raw materials on fake shit? Like, shouldn't you be saving that for the contracts? Or it, uh, I don't know if these are the exact factories and shit, but like all these raw materials and shit, they should be saving that for you know, these, these, you know, these authorized sneakers and stuff. But that's the thing is those, the people that are selling to me, the people, the way I look at everything in life is mm. like those people that are selling that, right. they don't give a fuck as long as they make money. They don't care about the, you know, they don't care about saving the materials to make money elsewhere because they're going to make the money regardless whether they sell it to you or whether they sell it to anyone. Like at the end of the day, you know, they're, I look at them, they're no different than 15 year old me, which is going to resell whatever the fuck you know right so and so so, like, so in turn that that's that's why I did, and this is just exactly what you said they want to get their money right so they're, they're going to make it as close as they can see that's why i do this because they're getting me so fucking close to the shit that i want damn they're most of the time better it's like why the hell are they wasting this time for one you know you got to dye leather and shit right you got to what you got to dye leather they're they're oh, different yeah. Yeah, dye course, techniques course. Yeah, they're yeah, different sure. techniques and all kinds of shit to, from mm -hmm. like the stressing to make a new bucks and all kinds of shit. My whole thing is like, you know, it's like, why the fuck are they spending all of this time doing this shit just to make some bullshit on, on, on fake product? That's my whole thing. Like, I, like I said, I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that shit is like exactly is it's, it's exact to what you would get in retail. Now, colors I mean, might be off here and there, but they get you there. My that's reasoning, the, my that's reasoning my thing, though, is the reason they do it is 
like the reason they do it now and they didn't do it back then is because there wasn't as much of a market for it back mm-hmm. then. Now, like reselling still existed back then. Like reselling's existed for as long as I've been in the sneakers at least. Yeah, it's been there. You know? It like, just wasn't like as crazy. I said, yeah, exactly. It just wasn't as bad as it is now. Um, like I said, the most expensive example I could think of that I wanted was the Tiffany's, you know. But I remember looking at the Paris Dunks on Flight Club and thinking like, damn, these things are going for insane amounts of money. Right. Um, you know, or the Freddy Coug- Cougars, right? But uh, mm. like, I just think that back then it wasn't as, it was a much more niche market. Same with streetwear. It was a much more, it was a smaller market. Not as many people were into it. Well, even when Tony can say, when he started doing YouTube and when I started doing YouTube, the biggest YouTuber on the platform didn't even have as many subs as I currently have now. Mm. You know, that like people, I remember, I think when uh, Bull started doing it, you know, like that, the market was still so small. There wasn't as many people that were on the internet doing it, you know? And I that's remember what, when I first me... started getting into clothes, all my all my friends were like, oh, blah, blah, that's weird. Like, they just thought it was weird. So, like, they thought it was weird. I was so into, like, you know, uh, I remember when I stopped wearing baggy pants, all my mm-hmm. friends were, were like, oh, you're wearing your girl's pants. Like, oh, blah, blah, your pants are too tight, yada, 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 just because I wasn't wearing baggy pants, you know? I'll say this, I'll say this. The reason why it's done that way, MK, is because when there's money to be made, they'll take it to, take it to that length. I got, yeah. I got my pair of Air Force Ones that we made, right? Oh, y'all yeah, made them shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I got a real pair. And we even got the fucking sample level, level, le- le- you know, metal shit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So when they're willing to spend money, they're willing to make it. They are making more. The factories are making more money off of the UAs than with Nike. Right. For sure. Exactly. Here so yeah, so why not make sure that they're doing it the right way? You right. know what I'm saying? That's but, what But my overall thing is it's not it's not them doing it. My thing is like, why the fuck are you wasting these materials and y'all know y'all got other contracts to fulfill and shit. But if they're making more money off of it, it's not a waste to them. You know, yeah, like it's if not I a can, waste. if I can spend if if I use like any metric, whatever measurement you want to use, I got even better yards, a hundred yards of leather, you know, over here, and I use a hundred yards of leather over here. For me, if I have you know, 200 yards of leather, I'm not going to save the other 100 yards for the next contract. I'm going to try to maximize the amount of profit. Okay, but also, so, so shouldn't yards. materials become scarce for, for like Nike or Adidas or some shit like that? I'll tell you this though, MK, I'll tell you this. Dealing with them myself, it might be different, but I'm going to give you my theory. Mm-hmm. When it comes to these materials and comes to these companies, they're in the right. hands of the, the factories. If they don't have none that material, they, hey friend, we don't have that material that you want, but we have this one that's an alternate and they'll, they can sell them on that. That's why when we get retros, they're not the same exact material as the OG. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like we're at the, we're at the hands of, at, of the, of the, of the factories. We're at the hands of the makers. There's times when I made, like if I made this hoodie and I want to remake this hoodie, this, this same cotton that was used here, they might, that factory might not have this textile no more. Because of UA shit. So basically because what of, you're because saying, of they're other sacrificing people. the better materials on UA. Rather than using on authentic, not product. even. Not, but we can't. I would say even better. I, I, I wouldn't say what they yeah. Have, what they have. Yeah, current. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. it's better. We don't know. But at the end of the day, right, right. Like, like, like I said, we got um, just anything. Like, if, when it, when it comes to making something, they have to send them a swatch. If right. they want a certain swatch, they might not longer have that fact that material for some. We weren't gonna have it for three, four months. Nike's right. not gonna go and say fuck them. They're, they're gonna saying. try to fall yeah. on an alternative. Right, right. The alternative okay. might be the same. It might be less, or it might be better. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. But there's always going to be something available. You know, there's always going to be something that, yeah. they can, that they're available. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, I do feel like, you know, um, they're not losing, you know? Yeah. And that's also, just, hey, Tone, just, a, just a touch on that. Just okay. a touch on that, too. Um, for sure. You know, on, we, make, we make shirts. We make shirts in a, around the way, you know, for different things. We know different performers, whatever the case may be. And you might get, you might go and get 40 shirts, T-shirts made up, Right. Yeah, you come the next week and try to get another forty. That material ain't the same. Exactly. It's oh, it, it could be different. It, it, it's various. You know what I'm saying? So exactly, I agree with you on that. Yeah, unless you're like, I, I think that kind of stands with most companies. Unless you're, of course, like, like a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci. Like that is one of the things where you get into those higher end prices where that's why it's a lot easier to legit check those is because their manufacturing processes for the most part don't change as much. Hey, hey, Jacob, just to touch up on, you're a reseller, right? Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. You know, I live in Brooklyn, Brownsville. Okay. And, um, you know, we have a whole bunch of reseller store moms and pop joints or whatever. Yeah. And I don't mind 
paying, you know what I'm saying, even if, you know, $150, $200 extra, if we're going to wear it, like, two weeks before the joint drops, because that's what we used to do, you know? That's the only that's... way we'll pay for the resellers. Like, we'll give them an extra 200 because the sneakers don't drop into two weeks. We used to call them Tom, Dick, and Harry's. You know what I'm saying? That was mm. a store around Brooklyn where Jay-Z and them used to shop. You know what I'm mm. saying? Bleak. So we would cop the sneakers. Yeah, we would pay $150, $200 more than the retail, you know? It will be like 450 but you'll have the sneakers on before they even drop. So I don't mind, you know, doing shit like that. But when they get to the 1000 you know, 15, 1500 like, you, come on, you old dean with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you like, you, nah, that's too much, man. But I don't like, agree with that. I think, I, think it goes, I think it comes down to this, though, like, and don't get me wrong, there are certain ethics that I have, right? Like, for example, like, I would never sell a Kobe sneaker. I just think that's disrespectful, right? Right. And some people might disagree with that. I'm not going to knock another man's ethics, but... I do think that, like, that being said, if a sneaker is going for 1500 and someone comes in and says, oh, I'll give you 200 over retail, I'm going to look at him like, bro, are you tripping? Like, what? Like, I'm just going to, I'm selling this for 1500 I might even, I might, if I want to move it quick, sell it for, you know, 50 to to $100 under market. But that's, right. and that's where it kind of, I that's why I understand, like, some of the distaste for StockX because it adds transparency to that. And it basically, now it creates a market value for everything. Like, right. you know, StockX, and I've even seen this. I, I used to be sponsored by StockX, right? I've seen StockX go from a community of people, the people that work there that actually liked the shit, mm -hmm. to being so corporate now that now they got Xboxes on there. Like, how do you legit check Xboxes? You know, it's, like, it's, it's impossible, man. Like, uh, so it's yeah. like, so, like, I get kind of the the distaste for certain things about right. the culture, right? I just think that, like, in general, we are so quick to cast judgment on people. There's like, I said, there's still probably people in this chat, even after some of the stories that you know, some of the stories I've told, who are probably like, "Oh, this guy's just a fucking hype beast." Let's, he started buying right, 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 right. Crew, you know? crew, crew. My brother, crew in the chat. Nike doesn't own the materials. Nike doesn't own the factory. They're at the discretion of that person that they're working with. Hey, crew, funny as hell, man. So, so, hey, bro, yeah, I just want to say something, bro. One more, one more thing, Chad. One more, one more thing. I, 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 I was trying to show it to him. I, I recently showed on the channel uh, a, a swatch of different materials and stuff. The yeah. factory that's making the shoe is not the one producing the materials either. They're outsourcing the materials and then they're making the shoe. So Nike has no control over, oh, hey, I, yeah, hey man, I need you to sell me that and that only and that's mine. There's no Nike leather, none of that. That shit is made. And if I showed you it's a card with Chinese lettering on it from some sort of Chinese textile facility that makes that fabric who would then when, hey. the, when the factory that makes a shoe wants it they'll send them the shit and then they do it that way that's how it's done hey, hey tony hey tony right. i want to tell you something right. um my 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 pops right you know he had a mattress factory right check this out so we made we made mattresses all type of mattresses you know what i'm saying all type of all type of different mattresses so what Sealy would do would come and buy from us and put Sealy mattress but they never they never uh they never made the mattress. Yeah. You understand? That's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Bro, I just yeah. wanted to respond. Go, go on, like, yeah, go ahead. What, what uh, Tone Cap's saying, bro, we live in, like, a completely different time now, bro. Yeah. Like, like, just to give you an example, bro, like, something that y'all probably don't even know fucking shit about. Like, comic books, like, before then, like, before 2007, you could probably buy, like, every fucking first appearance of every Avenger for under 30K. Now, if you want to get them shits just because of the movies and the hype because of that, you want you you spend at least like half a mil just getting those comic books. And that's just because just because of the hype it is, bro. It's just because of like the fucking like of what I we live in. Nah, that, yeah, I understand. Like, I, I, I get you, man. But look, right now, like if you, you if you got the money, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? But like we we in New York City or whatever, you know, we are in different cities. Like we don't. See, I, I, I'm, I'm just catching up to all his videos, and I've been watching MK, you know what I'm saying? I've been watching Tony, you know what I mean? I've been fucking with Zaya, you know what I'm saying? But over here, we worry about different stuff than what other cities worry about. Because you over here, like, you know, people ducking shots and stuff. You know, people don't got time to be looking at what sneakers you got on or if it's the right stitching. Like, they people over here don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So if people start wearing UA, we won't even tell because... On the simple fact, we, we can't stand too long in the street to really look or on the party to really look at a, a dude's sneaker to see if it's real or not. You know what I'm saying? So I know well, they be sneaking UAs over here like a motherfucker. I don't think any I don't think any city like has people like I've never ever 
I mean, I guess maybe at like I've seen sneaker con videos of people saying, "Oh, these sneakers are fake." But for the, the most part, I've never seen a real example yeah. of someone going up to someone and being like, "Tone, that's a that's a Yo, movie. I think your sneakers are fake." Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a that's a movie that's a movie thing at this point. You know where that you know where that assumption comes from? The creepy, scary motherfucker that's in the corner at McDonald's doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they post yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And it posted on Twitter like, "Yo, that, like you look at the picture, it looked like he just took it, but you don't know, buddy was like." Word. <laughs> you know, but he made he made it seem like he was up in the, the dude's face, like yeah, I ain't scared of him, but little do you know, buddy over there like I don't want him to Yeah, see, in the I'm, corner. Yeah, creeping. You yo, you ain't calling somebody out on the train yeah. or, or, or nah. like you ain't you walking in the hood like you ain't gonna call my sneakers out because you gonna you something gonna happen to you right there. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck exactly. you looking at my sneakers. Like, yeah. nah, we didn't do that. <laughs> you know yes, sir, back in high school, if, if you was like that nigga, you could walk around fucking Sperry's. Nobody fucking cared. Like yeah. so. Oh, I seen a motherfucker whoop somebody ass in some Sperry's. Like <laughs> yeah, one, one dude yeah. got the Air Force One clean as fuck on fresh, get his ass whooped by a motherfucker in some Sperry's or some Birkenstocks. Nigga in the burger stock dump picked him up and dropped the dude in the Air Force Ones on his head. Like, trust me. You thinking that? Hey, like, yo. Yeah. Hey, yo, them Air Force Ones did justice in New York, bro. Let me tell you. You go anywhere with twice, bro. Them UAs, bro, people was buying them like a motherfucker. Oh, hey, hey, yeah, hey, real talk, bro. Ninth and 10th grade, I had we had a spot on, um, called the, we called it West Side over in Metropolitan. We used to get right. them, them bitches for $30, Air Force One. Yo. Yo, $50 over here, bro. 30 bucks, you bro. You can only rock them for like a day or two. Yeah, bro. Them After bitches, that, Shit, and then and we had that we had that motherfucking white paint shit. Paint them bitches yeah, up. Keep them yeah, bitches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that shit. Oh, we used to do a lot of shit. I used to put the sock. I used to put like a sock underneath the tongue to keep the tongue up and keep the tongue up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah bro. It was so but, much. Yo, thing. you could have tell back in the day, like twenty five years. You you could really tell those are fake. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You could. Yeah. Nowadays, you can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really but, can't. Unless you're really then, up close, like, looking at the dude, he's going to punch you in your face. But that, I, like, you get up I close, think my, thing, my, thing though is, my thing is, though, is like I, like I said earlier, I don't think anyone should call someone out for what they wear, you know? Yeah, but yeah, what the, what the fuck is calling out, though, man? Word, man. Like, what the fuck is calling out, like, saying, like, 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 no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know what it means, but what the, what the fuck does that get you, though, when you, when somebody does that? Like, no, I'm saying, like, even online, like the person taking a picture or whatever, I just, I'm saying, like, I don't even think that that should be a thing. Like, a but, cu the culture, to me, the worst culture, worse than anything, is the culture of, like, trying to down another man for what they put. That shit goofy as hell, man. Hey, yo, call it, you call out. Like, yo, hey, yo, imagine this. You taking a picture, right? And you throw it on, on Instagram and Facebook, and they zoom in in your fucking sneakers, bro. Like, what the fuck culture is this, bro? Yeah. Yo, yeah, they think, really do this shit, bro. Yeah, that, that shit, that shit, I never understood being called out. Yo, they like, zoom fuck. in on your sneakers and see if it's real. <laughs> but where does it go? Are they going to, like, Yo. some archives or some shit? They go in some archives, like, you being called out? Shit. Like, where does it go? I don't know. They don't, they, I don't know, man. You get punched in my face. You get punched in, I mean, you get punched in the face in the hood. <laughs> Over here, <laughs> you get knocked out. You say, yo, them joints are fake. You getting knocked out. You getting washed. Something's going to happen to you there. You're not just going to walk off and, and make everybody laugh? Nah, son. Something gonna happen to you. I'm gonna call yeah. somebody out. My you know, God bless you if you do call somebody out that you got UAs or whatever. You know, God bless you. You know, you must know some shit that you know some kung fu moves or something that's gonna help you. Hey, quick. they they can call me out all day. All I can say is they look good, don't they? Yo, MK, them shits look you, good, bro. bro. I don't they care, man. I don't look good, don't they? <laughs> yo, I don't own a pair, but they look good because I don't have problem copping sneakers in my hood. Like we got two Jimmy Jazz and we got a um a lace up. So you know, them dudes. Once you've been around the hood twenty five years. They know who, who you know, they know, if you, like, if I come in, they'll give me the sneakers, like. But the only thing is hard is the, the, the hype sneakers. There's nothing like that over, over here. You got to go, like, you know what I mean, like, out, out like, to the city or or, or, or or to the other area. Nigga, I live in Kentucky. How the fuck you think I feel? Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> we don't see shit. Damn, Damn that's crazy. You got to go to the mall. No, nah, bro, like the most, like, like we have this place, this boutique shop called One Niche out there, but like I go to UK. So all the hype shit that they get goes straight to the basketball players. Like I wear a size 13. So like oh, literally man. like hey, a couple years ago, good. bro, I, I camped out for the black OVOs in front of their shop if for like 12 hours in like 16 degree weather. These motherfuckers, oh. these motherfuckers <laughs> just pull up at seven o'clock in the morning, basketball players, all these motherfuckers walk straight in, get their pairs, 
I got up to the line. They said the biggest size they had left was a nine and a half. I tell you, my heart dropped straight out my ass, bro. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Motherfuckers, though. Damn, that's fucked up, man. Did you say you were a nine and a half, though? 13. Nah, nah bro. <laughs> no. You said you were a nine and a half. I had, to for a I had to get something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you, though, man. I, I hate you, man. I, I, feel you, I feel your pain, man. I think, though, we're at an age now or a part, like, where it just, motherfuckers just don't care. Like, I think everybody's grown now to what we understand, like, Indeed. It, it's more than, I, it's more than, it's more than this shit than sneakers, and people have their yeah. reason why they buy UAs and have they buy real, but at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck about, no, nobody gives a fuck about the next person doing it because we all are going through something, or we at least know everybody's yeah. going through something. I think it does depend. Yes, sir. I agree with I think, you, man. I think I think it's hard to just say we're in one spot or the other. Because, like, for example, it's hard for me to say about New York because New York is obviously, like, that's the birthplace of a lot of this shit. So, you know, I even said in my video, there was, like, yeah. a show, like, a pink In New York, day. you Jacob, just... Jacob, I'm, I'm not to cut you off, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you some real shit. What's up? What people worry about is not getting shot, bro. I'm, I'm going to keep it funky with you 100%. Yeah, nigga, where like, you people ain't no, worried sure. about what you got on because they ain't got the time, bro. Like, I'm serious, man. Like real shit. People no, ain't got sure, time but... to really look at. You know what I'm saying? Like but my, people think... wondering, like, oh shit, there's, there's shooting over here or whatever. Like niggas is on the move. They not standing still and worrying what somebody got on. Or unless That's you facts. go to a party, you understand know what I'm saying? But no, I feel you. But like, it's like it's hard. I was, gonna it, use, I, was, I was gonna use the example of, like my brother Keon, right? My brother, he's locked up right now. Okay, right. so he d is not a sneakerhead, but he likes shit that's fresh. And so, like, right. I know for a fact he would pay resale for a sneaker. He makes quick money you know so mm. i know he'll pay resale for a sneaker but i know if i told him that sneaker's fake he's still not gonna he's, he's, not, he's not gonna get it because because he because he's because he's like oh that's not fresh and whatever like well you know but i i just that's why i say i think it's different like no you can't really just box someone in as like oh blah blah this person's a shooter so you know yeah. you, guys can look yeah, yeah, his name. you guys can google his name if you guys want to see his rap sheet like he's not you know and that, right. that's the thing is like when it comes to there are people that are still really about it that are not going to buy a fake pair just because of the perception of it. Or they're going to just go buy like a pair like Alexander McQueen's. Like, right. you know, I think I think it's just a mind thing. You know what I'm saying? It like, is. It's, definitely it, it's just it's just your, your mind playing games on you, because let me tell you, you know, I, I watch, you know, I've been watching, like I said, and, and, and you really look at it like it's just your mind, bro. Like you can put something on and ain't nobody as long as you can feel confident with it. Whatever you put on, it, it doesn't even matter, bro. Like, it's a time and place for a lot of things. And let me tell you, man, you got to grow up sometime, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all about it. You know, you got to hey, be an Tone, adult. Tone, I got I a question. I bag more chicks than some flip-flops than I do in this Tone, let, Tone, let me ask you one thing, though. Coming from, uh, yes, from NY, though. Can you rock fake Tim's? Hell no. Nah, you can't do that, man. I'm sorry. That's it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hell why not, no, why not, bro. bro. Well, wow. man, yeah, we will call you out for those. <laughs> we will call you out for those. Uh, oh, you I'm mean sorry. like some? You mean like some off-brand shit? Like some Wolverine? Nah, nah, like nah fake you talking about just love. He, he fake don't know what we talking about, man. I'm talking about the fake he boys. Know what talking about them bitches that feel like they felt. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey, nah, back in the day, I reviewed no. a pair of fake Tims, bro. They got fake Tims on, on over 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 the water, bro. They got them. Them bitches feel like motherfucking nah. felt, bro. They make nah, crazy. that's something we can't. Nah, they yeah, definitely call you for them joints. You can see that shit a mile away. What kind of like wear? Huh? Nah, nah. I can't wear butters. The butter I, I wear butters, some yeah. UAs, but I, I ain't wearing no fake Tim. That that I don't give a fuck. I'm buying them. They got the double sole butters, of course. All version of Tims, huh? We talking you know, about fake. No, we talking about fake. This fake, like the across the water <laughs> fake Tim's. Now, yeah. Now, what you're talking about, what NBS is talking about, <laughs> is the ones that ain't got the double le uh, the double uh, layer on it. The double sole joint. Yeah, that, the double that, sole joint. That's the, the ones that them the ones you them up. If you wearing the single sole, you better be motherfucking uh, <laughs> yeah, working. Yeah. Soul, you better be, no, you better be you better be you better be motherfucking working on a construction site for real. <laughs> you better be working. Yeah, you definitely better be working construction with the with the reflector joint. Yeah, and you better be working. Yeah, nah, yeah, the single like, sole nah. joints. Or Yo, Tony, bro. Funny dude, bro. I like that. <laughs> I just had to check. So there is a limit. There's a limit at least. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, There's man. definitely a limit, sir. <laughs> Jacob, so you uh, rock, so Jacob, you rock bootlegs? No, I mean, well, vintage, vintage bootlegs. So I can't, so I can't say. So I, it's it's hard for me. To, I would never rock like per, just for me personally a bootleg brand. Like for me, like the reason I have that bootleg juice shirt is because like that's 
one of my favorite movies. <laughs> like New Jack City. New Jack don't. City is, is New Jack City was my first VHS tape. So like if I saw <laughs> a bootleg New Jack City uh tee, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm wearing that. But if it's like a particular brand, then personally I wouldn't wear it. Because I feel tell? like there's so many other brands that I could wear, so many other things I could wear I said that are hype that would replace that. What about, China, what about Chinatown Market? Uh, I don't really wear any Chinatown Market. All right. Now, because they do a lot of that shit. Like, they do a lot. Yeah, they do a lot of bootlegs. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of... I, I have one thing from Chinatown Market, but anything that I've gotten from them, I think I've... I don't have any clothing from them. But, yeah. Mm. I think, bro, personally, if it speaks to you, wear that motherfucker, bro. Because I only know, like... A- like if if you like fucking really calling somebody out for some shit that they're wearing, like you're fucking lame. Yeah. Like, no, as long sure. as fucking, like as long as they like go outside and they got fucking shirt on their back and some shit like this, like this is a fucking this is like some shit that I fucking made, bro. Like real talk, like wow. I think it's hot and I don't give a fuck about what anybody else says. So uh, like, I ain't gonna lie though, but um yeah. I'm I'm definitely gonna get some UA though. Like I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. You know, as long as they're not, it, 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 it's it's not it's not even the the joints like the joints I could get for retail, like far as Jordans and all that. Like I could get those. You know what I'm saying? Or probably like the, some hype joints. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? I just I just think my my only take on it is that, and and like I said, at the end of the day, it all helps me. So if people want to wear the brand and they want to market it. That's fine. You know, I just think that like my overall point, <laughs> and this is what I kind of wish that I could get across more with the trips to the thrift the trip to the thrift videos i do is that like you don't need to wear that that like you don't need to have that nike swoosh on your foot like it's like just wear a different shoe like nike doesn't give a fuck mm. about their consumers nike doesn't care about any of the people lining up nobody does not for, any for sneakers you know so it's like they don't like everyone loves everyone loves nike but nike doesn't love any facts. of us back because so they can, like, cause remember, you gotta facts. remember the, the 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 sport figures that's who they really want. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like you got these, you know, yeah, you got these basketball players, and we don't know, even support like, the basketball players. No more. We just like fuck them, bro. Yeah. It feels like it feels like like we're like I, I know I don't know if any of y'all motherfuckers ever worked on a farm, but like when you <laughs> like it, when you're fucking on a farm and you feeding the pigs, like you just throwing shit out there, and whoever gets it fucking gets it, bro. Mm. I feel like we're just the pigs. And Nike's just throwing shit out there, and it's like, fuck it, whoever gets it, gets it. And the motherfuckers who bought them are getting fat as fuck. And you don't want to get too fat, shout out to Ann Herbert, because you'll get fucking slaughtered. Nike like- knows how to fix this shit, but they won't fix this shit, period. They're making money regardless, bro. They know how to fix the shit, but they won't fix the shit, period. You know what? Because they're making money regardless. Exactly, exactly. And especially, let me tell you, if you think... She was the only one doing that. You might be mistaken. Hell nah, she ain't doing that, man. It's it's like hundreds more doing that shit. That's why it's so fucked up now. Yeah. Yeah. Because let me tell you, if, if, like, back in the day, I worked in a store called Dr. J's. You know what I'm saying? And it was in downtown Brooklyn. Yeah, Yeah. New York. And and we we employees, you know, if I'm in there, I can buy sneakers first than anybody. I could get my man a pair of sneakers before anybody, like, it's it's that's unedible, man. So it's definitely happening there because it happens in a smaller scale. So what do you guys think about the whole like uh, discussion of um, Marcus backdooring pairs? What you mean, as far as what? Like, is he doing that shit? In terms of comparing that to like the Ann Hebert situation? Oh man, oh, nah. if, if there's money to be made, you'll do some crazy shit, man. I don't look. I don't put nothing past nobody, man. Shit, yo, let me tell you, man. If you if you if if you're in that business of reselling, you, you, you asking yourself a question, you know the answer because you're not going to deny no bread. You understand what I'm saying? So what you think sure. is happening, it happens to the to the resellers, it happens to the, to the regular bodegas, it, it happens everywhere. It don't matter where you go. It happens some type of form. It's, it's, that's, that's something you can't stop. No, for sure. if I'm I cool, think- Let's say I'm cool with that dude, right? I give him straight cash and I say, yo, I need 10 pairs. Of, and he's my man. You think he's not going to do it for me? No, I, I think he for sure will. I just think, like, I think the whole, the whole like, Ann Heber thing was, like, Nike just basically trying to save face. Because, I, like I said, I don't think Nike cares about uh, nah, man. Making, course, man. making the experience, making the experience for, like, I don't care people, about the pigs, right? have, You know? That's look my look what it made it do. Look what it made it, look what it made it do. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, for sure. It's exactly, it's good for them. More, more, more publicity. Now we buy more Nike. You know, it's just the same thing, man, like. I right, I'm, I'm trying to get with MK and get me some duets, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, yo. MK. 
Is a replica jersey like a replica shoe? What was that? Is a replica jersey like a replica shoe? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Jer- yeah. Well, yeah. well, I not think jerseys that, are a little bit different. Yeah, not, I wouldn't say the replica sold on the website because there's replica jerseys in like reality, like real replica, like oh, across the waters. No. I'm and, talking. I'm talking about. I'm talking. I'm talking about the one that Fab it, and I'm used to wearing the videos and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could have got those jerseys in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everybody had. Every, they, that was one point they were selling jerseys fifty dollars. You know, throwback joint that's that yeah. sold for a thousand. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be like, yo, how the fuck dude got this jersey? Yeah, you taking like, it back, nah. You taking it back about damn near twenty years. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that I'm shit back school, then. Man. I'm old school, bro. <laughs> yeah, that I'm shit back then. School. It was. It was a real weird time, like in 2007, 2006. Hell yeah. Like the, yeah. Like the Jays and shit, man. Them yeah. shit was like motherfucking soft shell tacos, man. Like, <laughs> that shit was crazy, man. Like, but, I saw a pair of fucking Altitude 13s. Like, when them shits first came out, like, yeah. they had a replica pair of them shits. But them shits were made out of plastic, bro. Like, <laughs> them shits, like the carbon yeah. fiber was like a yeah. plastic plate or some shit. We had like, no knowledge like totally back then. Different. We had no knowledge, though, at all. So that's I'm why. I had no knowledge then. Like, I'm kind of curious, like, uh, MBS, you know me asking, what was your, I guess, what was your, like, uh, your point with that in terms of like were you trying to see if they have a problem with fake jerseys opposed to fake sneakers and uh you've been in it for a while but i don't know what your opinion is on it if you don't mind me asking. no like i can as the quality control oh okay mm. in terms of like whether or not it stacks up against the authentic yeah right. fake ass jerseys back in the day they used to sell at little five points the motherfuckers used to be itchy as hell Wait, you? Oh, you wait. Nah, Chef, nah, Chef, hold you're hold in Atlanta, Chef. You in Atlanta? <laughs> the the regular jersey. Chef, you're that in, you I used to buy throwback. You they feel the same uh, way as you buying an original. The only mm. thing that you might be off is maybe the NBA where they put the NBA at, and you could tell, like, if you really come up close, and it was just yeah. like little thing. But see, he from no, New York. Was, that, was, they, he know that shit. Yeah, because I, I know, bro. I'm trying to see him, and I used to cop those, and you could tell, like, if you get a good one by the stitching where the um. Where the size is at, that you know, that's so, where people used to t- tuck those in. Tone, you really Tone, see. Tone, you're on a good point though. That that's probably one of the best things to find a fake jersey. Unfortunately, is to look at what logo is on the jersey because there's a lot of yeah. times where they'll put like an Adidas logo, but when mm-hmm. that jersey was made originally, it was Reebok because you know NBA, Reebok, right, NBA right. Was Reebok got it, got Adidas, it, Nike. Like they done switched it up so many times that mm-hmm. like right now it's Nike. But if they do a throwback Lakers with Kobe Bryant with the blue, it would right. need to have a Adidas on it because they like he wore one with that had an Adidas back then I think. So yeah. it's like they switch it so many times. Like Tracy McGrady when he was run with the Houston Rockets, it was Reebok. So if you got a Tracy McGrady Facts. with the Nike, then you got to kind of question that because it ain't making sense. Like they the throwbacks have to match up. Now if there's like a yeah. throwback hardwood classics, then it's different. But what I'm trying to say is if you got like a vintage, it needs to match up with the brand that was popping at brand. that time. Mm. Right. Because Reebok's right, right, right. been involved, <laughs> Nike's been involved, Adidas been involved. They've yeah, all they been involved. Got the contract. Exactly. But y'all, I'm about to go ahead and wrap this up, man, because we're at three hours right now. I don't want to overdo it to the people that's playing back. Um God damn. Yeah. We, we 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 usually keep it at three hours anyway, so I appreciate everybody. I yeah, appreciate, I appreciate y'all, you, bro. All right. Uh, all right, brother. I'm, I'm, all right. Man, all right, I'm gonna holler at you on IG. All man. right, Jacob, all I appreciate right, you coming through, Jacob. man. Jacob, pleasure, my MK, man. NBA, yeah, it's a pleasure, pleasure. Word. All right, pleasure. y'all. Yep. All right, fellas. Yep. Nice. Salute to the whole panel, man. Yep. For real. Peace. 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 All right, y'all. We're gonna wrap this thing up. Hit that motherfucking like button on your way out. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, salutes to all the donations that came through today as well. I really appreciate that. Mopar, Casey, Copper Color, King. Sick Kicks, Ryaner, Dot B, Melvin, OG Chocolate Drop, U1, Kicks and Beats, Millie City, Dre Jungles. You see the, the, the bears coming in right now. What's up, bear? They tell me I need to get the fuck downstairs, basically. Like, they, they want me to come downstairs, I guess. They know it's time to wrap it up. Papa Q, Monolithics with that motherfucking 50 piece. <laughs> Um, we got also ASAP Geo, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all. 600 once again. Look, Chunky got scared. I love y'all, man, as always. Um, we'll try to come back tomorrow with another banger. If there's any topics you want me to talk about tomorrow or moving forward, feel free to tweet me, DM me on IG, DM me on Twitter. Hit your boy up because we are going to keep this thing going. The Two Wild Show, the Two Wild Podcast. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And as always, man, salutes to all the people on the panel. MK, Jacob, uh, Chev, Tone. Um, MBS, 
uh troll mageddon everybody man as always you ready chunk i'm coming down bro i love y'all man i appreciate y'all y'all have a great night salute to d blake in the chat big perm uh kev uh buckeye city so i see y'all crew everybody man y'all have a great night great sunday and i'll see y'all more than likely tomorrow new video just dropped right now on my main channel go and check it out man too wild for two well, no, my tony d too wild and i might be going live tonight on twitch so pull up on your boy Mouth.